You always talking shit, so. Yo. Yo. It's your boy Taco. And it's your boy Akeem Sincere. This is another episode of the Always, always Talking, talking shit, shit Show. show. <laughs> All right, we just did a whole like. Don't worry. Why are you always telling? Because That's they got. That's your favorite I, thing I to like do, bro. You know fuck we got I almost called on. you the S word. But I, I caught myself. Throw a whole fucking fuck I caught shit. myself, man. So breaking motherfucking <laughs> news. John motherfucking Gruden. Just this in. Just step down as the head coach of the Raiders. A organized stepping of down. Uh, For racist comments, what? Racist? From 20, I mean, a long time, but no, 2018 no, no, no. being the most recent, right? Uh, 2020? 20, oh, 2018, shit. 2020. This basically since he's been a Raiders coach. Um, racist, homophobic, homophobic misogynistic, uh, all the in. Well, you know, I think the only person that, that didn't catch a straight this time was my Latino people, man. Shout out to my Latinos, man. <laughs> y'all good this time, man. Ain't, he ain't get y'all. He ain't come for y'all. Uh, until we see some more emails. And they, right. Like, and then y'all niggas too. Y'all all types but of Bs and Ss. I'm excited for this, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I used to be a kid that was naive when I played sports, and I was like, oh, man, you don't want to see a guy lose his job. But I was, I was conditioned to say that shit because all my favorite anchors and analysts said the shit. You know what I'm saying? They all said that. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not a hater. So, you know, I don't want to see a man lose his job. Like, I like to think that we're in a country that you can have your own personal ideals about people and opinions. The The thing is, is we got to play the same game. We got to start leveling this playing field. Um, John Gruden is just, hasn't proven himself to just be an, an exceptional, exceptional coach that builds a team. I mean, he has gotten that bestowed upon him right. because he did win a Super Bowl, and I will never take that away from him. I don't care whose team it was, who was the coach, who built what. You coached those gentlemen through a Super Bowl, and that, that's commendable. Um, if you start pulling the layers behind a coach like him, I played for guys like this, man. If you start pulling the layers behind them, they could be rah-rah at first, and they could be real team building and all the cliche things, but those things aren't authentic. And when you start traveling with these people, right, eating with these people, right, losing with these people, disappointing some of these people, the truth starts to come out. And I think that this can jumpstart the locker room. I know that you you were saying that earlier, like when we were no, talking. No, I think okay. Let me say this. Let might. me say this the right way. Let me say this right the way. Well, no, no, let me finish. You didn't say it wrong. No, no, no. no I I felt like I worded it wrong because this is what I mean. I don't feel bad for him. No, that's I not what I'm bad for. I feel bad for the team that's like having this okay. whole shit going that's on. Like what, they're no, doing hell. That's what good. I took it that you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. I but just this is what to I'm gonna say. Right? Yeah. This is what I'm gonna say. Just being in, in locker rooms. This is what I would say. When the New York Times finds out that you have a history of openly, dog, you don't own the Raiders. No, yeah, there. right. <laughs> so when you're on the Raiders, when you you're emailing guess, the motherfucking you're Raiders, nigga, like when you emailing from your nice office mm -hmm. at the Raiders, you know what I mean? And you sending off these fucking races, these emails, and you don't think they're racist at time, probably because this is how you talk when no one else is around. See, this is why you know that there's an issue within yourself because, fam, if you talked about black people and their lips like that, we should all know about it. Right. And then we would have heard this and it would have been like, oh, that's John Cruz. You know how John Gruden feel about niggas' lips. Right. Right? That's where we got to get at society. And to, you know what I mean? But it's the closet racism for me. And the UN, as we reported on this great network, <laughs> has already determined that black Americans are living in racial terror here. And if we're the perfect people living in racial terror, who the fuck you think the terrorist is? Right. The people that, hey, not everybody. They would like to, but no, but remember, but remember, but remember, they would like to say we terrorize each other. But so what? Two things could be true. <laughs> right. Everybody else terrorizes each other. Exactly. So maybe we don't need it from both sides, okay? We do enough of that shit on our own, so leave us alone. <laughs> so leave us the right? fuck you should, alone. You should, you should show empathy. Like, man, you know what? They got no They got problem. no problem. <laughs> right? I don't want to hear that shit. I'm tired of these old 1800 it, fucking white privilege excuses that's been passed down from generation to generation on because it affects everybody it yeah. affects good white people yeah good white people don't want to deal with this shit man good white people be watching the news like watching that sit on january 6th Doing like man all the the, time. Oh like my God. you know how black people feel when a black person right. does something mad ignorant you be like this nigga just took because this, this is what we do every we be like oh that's nigga. exactly dog i'm never i've never been a person to feel like i just feel like people are more alike 
So even if they like to be, and even if they're very different, mm-hmm. fam, I, I can't help but to think, I always, even since I was a kid, I would think like, <laughs> oh, this is some shit that all white people ain't proud of right here. They're not, right? now, all these white like, people are not fucking with this. But the thing is, it's like, if you, the uh, white Americans have been made sensitive when it comes to race, which is ironic because they get the least brute of racism. Right. They They're see. actually descendants and sometimes torchbearers mm-hmm. of the creators of racism. Hey, black people around the world didn't know that they were black. Nope. So where black people come from, we wasn't calling it that. Now we're all in this country together. And I'm gonna get back to this, I'm gonna pull this back. Hey man, you're talking about the, the, the Los Angeles, Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders. Just like Al Davis's son, Stated, man. Hey, man, this organization, fam, and I'm a Cowboys fan. We not the Cowboys, fam. No. First black head coach, first Latin head coach, first female executive. That's what we do here. Al Davis, when he died, he was on his deathbed damn near when he ordered them to go rescue Terrell Pryor in the supplemental draft. Mm -hmm. This dude told, uh, my, my favorite team's owner, right? The owner of my favorite team. He said, hey, Jerry, man, why you overpay your players? He said, man, because my mentor, Al Davis, told me that's what I need to do. And what is Jerry's history? Overpay. If you play for Jerry, you're going to get a bag, whether we suck or whether we good. And trust me, I've been through these years. Mm-hmm. I've been mad at a lot of you niggas cashing Jerry's checks because I ain't think you deserved them, but it ain't my place to say that. <laughs> It I'm just my, a fan. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't my pocket. Right. Just had a nigga feeling like I might have played the wrong sport. Nigga. Like I tried to sort of move to Texas and tried to get on. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, man, when you have a guy that maybe only 30% of the, of the black players in the locker room and the white players think that he's racist. Mm-hmm. But you got to play for him. You have to travel with him. You have to listen to his views and his remarks on policy and political things. And then go play for And his thinking and the things that he said. Look, what what came out in these emails is he was against all the players kneeling. He he sounded like Donald Trump in the emails about the players. All of them should be fired. Doug, you're the coach of the Raiders Mm -hmm. in Vegas. Right. Like, you think think your team – Doug, you got rid of one of the best players on the team. After he signed a big deal, right when you first, you haven't even won a game yet. Khalil Mack. You got rid of, these, it's cats on that team like, man, this thing got rid of Khalil. Because what happens is when you're African-American and you're, you've seen these things, we're, we're experts on racism, bro. America just don't listen to us. So when you see that, black kids, black young men can correlate like, okay, he got rid of the most powerful black man here. Yep. He, he came in, his first move was to, Get rid of the most powerful young black man here. The one that could have his job if he wasn't living up to standards. If he got caught, like if Khalil Mack was on the team and that first shit came out, He'd he, he could have got fired because you got a superstar that had been like, yo, I'm not playing for him. Who just got paid hundreds of millions hey, yo, of dollars. The Raiders had paid him mm-hmm. before he left. Hey, yo, look, I'm not. No, but that's what I mean. And they just gave him that check. Right, yeah, They're going to listen like, to yo, that nigga. I'm not, I'm not playing for him. Right. But what happens is that sometimes white Americans give other white Americans the benefit of doubt. Like racism is just a myth in all these black people and Latino people's heads and shit, right? So they love for it to be so, that. <laughs> so what happens is is like you go in and I don't think that there's too many white executives or owners that would have seen what those young black players on the team seen when you first came in and that was your first move. They might have thought, oh, he's shaking things up. And we were paying that guy a hundred something million. I mean, it was cool, but if he's saying we can win without him, and better yet, we just paid him a hundred million guaranteed over ten years, so he ain't going nowhere, and he got all the power. And we know what this guy can do. We we brought him in to build it up because John Gruden has had a, a decided advantage in the fact that he's had a unique relationship with every top tier college player coming into the NBA draft for nearly 10, 15 plus years before he got back into coaching. Yep. He had relationships. He knew the personnel. And that's always good. That's why a good college coach that knows his shit, that got a little key cliche, can make a splash in the league sometimes. But if you don't have that, you're going to get lost in the sauce because you get into the league and you're like, they don't know these motherfuckers, like, and they don't know you. Right. You know? I think that it's both ways. You know, like, uh, 
If the team is fractured, if John Gruden was creating a culture of MAGA friendly type athletes, then that then that then you know what? This shit can crumble. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. what I'm saying no, is I'm like, not saying that you're saying. Uh, I'm speaking to that. I'm just saying that if you have a fractured team, MAGA over here. Oh yeah. Regular people over here. Yeah, I said regular that motherfucking that people. Do regular people over here, right? They and then gonna the gonna MAGA go extremists. You ain't gonna win. That, yeah, that could be an issue, you ain't but gonna win. Quiet is kept. John Gruden could have been the one because he's there and he's the head coach. And even those guys that ain't MAGA esque, they plan for their checks and their families and their communities. So black people have always been able to work and deal with racist white people that don't think highly of them and still succeed. That's the nature of being black in America since Europeans got here. So with that being said, as a fact, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, but it's not as demonstrative or detrimental to us. As it might be um, when you, that's why we roll our eyes when you hear about the story of, you know, cute white girl and she be like, oh, I was, I was working there and they were rude to me. Yeah. Or, you know, it'd be a guy who's like, man, my boss, man, he never spoke to me. It's like, man, go ask the black employees, have he ever spoke to them, bro? Like, they said Donald Trump used to come down and purposely shake all the white security guards and car dealers and stuff hands and walk past all the black people. So, that was going on in the fucking 90s, bro, in New York City. You know what black people did? Man, fuck Trump. Fuck him. <laughs> I ain't, I don't go to that shit. Fuck the Trump, man. He ain't nothing nice, right? I ain't never stayed at a Trump Tower. Been so in again, Trump when I tell you, based off this, and our brother Keith John, Keith John Johnson said it years ago, hey, man, just like we, black people told y'all about Trump before he got lit. Mm-hmm. We was cool with Trump because we knew he was racist. We give a shit. You think Puff Daddy and them was going to parties and seeing Trump and popping bottles with him and getting advice from him and thinking that he loved them or he was friends or their kids would play together? No, they was getting his, they was getting access to something that they can't get with their black skin and their hip hop roots. So to the rest of the world, they were like, "Oh man, this guy is this Trump man. He's not racist. He's Donald Trump." Man, black people go ask any black person in New York City. Go ask any Hispanic person from New York City. They will tell you like, no, nah, we all we all knew that this dude was was a, was a, a dub. You know what I mean? We all knew that. So, I don't know, man. What you think about the whole? I, I'll let you take it. You know what I mean? Shout out to the Raiders. Shout out to to uh, Al Davis's son. I keep forgetting his name. I think it's Al Davis Jr. Nah, it's something else. It's Are not. Are you sure? I'm positive. He might. There, there might be an Al Davis Jr. But the one that owns the team and runs the team, his name ain't Al. Um, I know that for a fact. I just can't remember. It's 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 not a damn. Yeah, look it up. I don't know why we're acting like we can't look shit up over here. But um, yeah, man, it's wild to me. Mark Davis. Mark. Yeah, I know it was something different, but yeah. Mark, um, okay, uh, so here's how I feel about it. Um, fuck him for one. Shout out to Mark though. Um, shout out to Mark for for standing on his ten and standing up for his fucking team, knowing his team is. 90% black and standing up for black and people and standing gays, up for man, black and, people you know, and gays in general and saying fuck I gave fuck it if I gave you 100 million nigga bye I need you to go like if you don't go I'm going to figure out how to get you up out of here like you're not it ain't nothing wrong with like it's cool I'm I'm with that I'm with that I'm with I'm with a owner you know here scoot up a little bit I'm with a owner um I'm all for an owner that's going to stick up for his motherfucking players all of them, all races, all gender, all sexualities, nigga. Because that sounds like a a locker room that if there was a gay person in there, he wouldn't allow you to treat him any type of way. Well, the first openly, well, not the first openly gay, but the them. but the the only I think the only remaining openly gay player is on in the their NFL team, right? is on the team, and now he has to read about the emails yeah. of you saying that oh, you, and he that just, you, and he that just you came think, out that you think Roger Goodell yeah. is a fucking faggot. Yeah, he ju- and he had just came That's out. What you over, said. Oh, and the fucked up part about it, he just came out over the summer or something, and Gruden was in his corner like, oh, that's that's strong that you, you know doing. Like, man, father, fuck you, nigga. You one of them. In your that makes you even more of a closet racist. No, bro, you're the worst. The closet racist people are the worst. And I think that I wish we got like to a place in society. Stand on your ten ever. Hey, as a black American, I don't think that anybody should lose their job for being racist. I think that you have the right to be fired for being racist mm-hmm. when all when majority of the people that I make a billion dollars a year off of are, are black. 
or yeah no no no, no. there's not even a black man in america should at least be fucking safe and protected from racism in the nba and the nfl god damn it period especially from a coach you know how much money we make like like for these leagues and it's already bad enough so, that the owners act like there's no black fans that pay for NFL ticket and all this shit and go to games and shit th- yeah, and so apparel and hats and shit. I but. don't I don't feel bad for Gruden at all. No, I no, no. I feel bad for the team. He I feel, lost, I I mean, feel bad for locker room morale now because they 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 now got to th- they now got to sit there and think about all the backhanded remarks that they might have washed off all the all the I'm talking about all the white dudes. That might have like, nah, he ain't that. Now you really, you know, it just, it may, it, like you said, it's them white people like, oh my God. Because some of the white people, the, like David Carr, <laughs> that nigga's probably like, fuck him. Like, are you serious? David Carr went to Fresno he State, defend, my he's nigga. The, he's the one that. Please tell me he didn't. Well, this is, look, I'll def- be fair to him. These new emails and stuff, just they just found out, like, no, this is how he talks. Mm-hmm. That first, it was people like me. Yourself? Oh, it was old. Saying, no, that's old. Yeah. Well, not even that it's old. I don't care how old your racism is, fam. I don't. Racist, Unless you, you prove it. Because right. like, how do you prove that you ain't like that no you more? You don't. There's so no So with way. that being said, I don't care about all that. I don't. Oh, that was 90. I don't give a fuck. Because if any white, if white people evolved from their racist ways so much, they would not be so irritated when black people try to peel back racial laws. Mm-hmm. They all want to, not all. But a lot of them, even non so called racist white people, would tell me, I got liberal ass friends. I'd be like, ah, I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really mad at the Confederate statues. And I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's stop. So, country has civil war. One side wins. What culture, nigga? That's not how this works. Because if, it, if that's how this works, they wouldn't have put our, us in slave chains when they got here. They would have just said, hey, man, let's negotiate the spot and everybody have their own little colony. Yep. Work if we're using the same yeah. logic of keeping Confederate flags and monuments up. And you're keeping Confederate flags and monuments the of, of, people, of people who said there should be no record of them losing the war. They lost. You don't put statues up of people who lost. You don't. Robert E. Lee wanted no commemoration of them losing that floor. He wanted they, that flag burned. He wanted no statues ever put up. He wanted none of that, nigga. He said we lost the war. European descendants often <laughs> often push off the talks of like historic racism and things of the past and right. systemic racism by saying things like, oh, well, you know, he who wins the war makes the rules. That's, that's, that's colonizer talk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know... He who, uh, who he who conquers gets to write history. That's colonizer talk. Mm-hmm. That's the talk of descendants of people that preyed on nicer, more spiritual people. They did not raise their hand in war with the Zulus and people of such. They came and befriended these people. They came and befriended Black Americans and Native Americans and what was the Mexican people and the, boy, what they say, Puerto Rican and Dominican people of the Americas. These were all the native tribes. They had to do They had to all do the it native that tribes way, of America. The crazy That's they, my point. They had to do it that way because we would have slaughtered their Look, ass. It, I'm making a point. It's always by friend, <laughs> right? Not necessarily. It'd be it, your own it, people. Even if we didn't. It could have been a war. I don't know who the fucking won, but nigga, it would have still been a war that's honorable. Yep. And in our cultures, tribal cultures, like you nigga, win, it's yours. we 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 gonna come in and like, okay, well now we live we this way, like yeah. unless we bring an uprising and separate, and I'm gonna take the throne. That's the way. But all I'm saying is, is humans have always been violent. Oh yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying that like white Americans are like uniquely more violent than any other set of humans, but all I'm saying is. In America, not people, the indoctrines, the like the like the, the written law, the infrastructure of America was built on a certain racism. So when you talk about hereditary actions, you might be a conqueror in a form of a culture vulture. 
You might be a fucking conqueror in the form of the head coach that really wasn't that fucking good at football, but was buddy buddy with the owners and worked hard with the head coach to be an assistant coach to now be an assistant assistant coach now to be a receiver coach coach, to be a head coach now and and there's a chip on your fucking shoulder when you have an 18 year old black kid that's straight out of poverty making all way more money than you ever did and 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 guess what even if it's not about the money it's about the because john gruden didn't grow up poor so at the end of the day it's not about the money because if you came over here on a boat from europe the government funded you if you think that i'm lying go do your own research and stop listening to your fucking grandparents because they lied to you it land grant colleges everybody looked that up it's the same speech that got martin luther king killed it wasn't he didn't give a fuck about his dream because that's just a dream by the time he met with lewis fair uh, uh the honorable elijah muhammad and they killed malcolm x he came back with a plan and demands that's why he's ended the speech with this time when i come to washington we're coming to get our check mm-hmm. because you gave you gave everybody our land you gave money out to everybody right no, 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 no. We're not going to be just economic fodder for everybody that comes here off a fucking boat. Yep. And that's what these young black athletes are starting to realize because guess what? E-40, as rich as he is, as much as the Bay Area loves him, that nigga stopped his fast food chains because he couldn't get one fucking bank to give him a business loan with perfect credit and million, tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars in the bank. Yeah, all the collateral. He said he was damn near jealous of Rick Ross because he was like, yo, man, how you getting all those? Are you, I know you're not funding that all on yourself. He's like, no, man, I get business loans and I do this. Woo, woo. Like, you can do that. It's easy. And he was getting at 40 like 40 didn't know. And 40 had to check. I'm like, no, nah, man, I, I live in California. See, they market California as free love, peace, and revel. Everybody's cool. Shit. New York and California are systemically just as racist as Texas. Right. That's just the way of the land in America. So this is much bigger, and I really believe you don't make it to the NFL as an athlete in today's time and harbor a resentment against black people. You don't. You would start playing. You I ain't playing basketball no more. I'm gonna go play baseball, or I'm gonna go do something where I don't got to be around these kind of people, because you don't go where black people dominate in in space to not like black people, right? Or to harbor something against black people, or to have these like type of downtrodden views on black people and so the thing is in the nfl it's time that they the players have been tired of this shit because the nfl is a good old boy league and the and even white journalists will call it that but we always speak in coded language when it comes to calling out racism towards black people in america like i mean it, like even when you start talking systemic a lot of people don't understand what that is so it, it it's a trap word like racism motherfucker it's racist racism but everything ain't racist, so it becomes a it becomes a layered conversation. I'll end with this on the whole John Gruden thing, fam. I I, I think that his players, if anything, it's a, a sigh of relief in that locker room. I think if anything, the white players might even have a sigh of relief, even if they don't realize it. Even when they just realize how how relaxed and like how the vibes change with some of their black teammates. When they look across the locker room and you see a guy that's always got a fucking frown on his face, smiling and like high-fiving and jumping around with everybody else, singing and being goofy, you understand like, oh man, he was carrying something. Like he, he was carrying something, dog. I've had, I've had teammates write in my yearbook about things that they hated watching me go through as a back, black athlete with white coaches. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's a real thing. And that's why, in my opinion, that white supremacist mentality is reason why you don't have a lot of black coaches in either sport. Dog, it'll be like 90% of the coaches in tennis and trainers in tennis being black. Right. It'll be like every golf caddy on the PG Tour, like PGA Tour, like would be black. You know? It'll be like every coach in baseball would be black. Every manager. Bro, I always tell my friends this. If you think that I'm barking up a tree that's irrelevant, if you think that I'm harping on things, and imagine, especially my friends in Nevada, Clark County or Washoe County, imagine. If you're not African-American, imagine. First couple of weeks of school, your mother drops you off. Your parents you know, drop you off. Oh, have a good day. And then they notice. 
as you begin to notice, that the only black or non-black adults at your school were the ball coach the and a janitor or two. Oh, the non-black. And maybe an older lady in the office. Mm-hmm. But think about that. You know what I mean? My friends that I grew, especially in Reno, that grew up and never had a black teacher, and they don't see nothing wrong with that. Black kids, they were like, well, I, I, never, I never really had a black teacher. Because it's an indoctrination. It's not fair. Like It's not like they can change it. But if black people didn't have to pull themselves out of slavery without this assistance that they, they that in a free world you would think that they had, in a compassion world, it would be more like these other ethnic groups that, wait, 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 wait. You know, the, the, the crimes against Asians are kind of going up. Fuck that. We need an anti-Asian hate crime bill. And they got one like that. I wish the average American Same week? knew. Huh? Same week? No, nah, a couple... Like within a month. Jeez. But all I'm saying is this. Black people have been murdered and killed for trying to introduce that bill. Black people have been in the Senate for over 30 years like like Mr. John Lewis. And that was the one bill that he authored that he always had been trying to get passed. That's why they renamed the bill after him, the John Lewis Civil Rights Bill, right? Yep. <clears throat> Martin Luther King talked about this. Malcolm X mocked us for going about it in a civil way. This ain't new. But like the average white person that think black people play the race card don't know that we don't even legally have a right to vote in this country. It's an amended right that has to be extended at the grace of a president whenever they get that across their bill. Like, hey, you know, it's time to extend those niggers right to vote in this country. You gonna do it? George Bush was nice. He said, I'll give him another, I think, what do he do, 25 years? Instead of just writing in that word. Just Bam, I can be from any place in the world. And, and, and come to America and get my green card, and I'll I'll never not be able to vote again. I'm an American citizen. All right. I can come over here illegally, have some children. Don't I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I mean? I, I don't cry no tears for the John Gruden's because I think that hate has become seductive. And if you can't beat them, sometimes you join them. But that's still there. You know what I mean? So. Like you, like you like to say, father fuck him. Father fuck him. Whatever that means. You know I mean, what I mean? Mother fuck you, father fuck you. Oh, okay, I get that. I'm late. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was fly. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, uh, we, well, we done with that, man. What, yeah, what, what you want to hold on. More, more breaking news. It was some more breaking news, right? Yeah. I'm going to let you take that one. Uh. Hold on, I ain't even hear nothing on that. What, what is one you talking about? Seen the great ones though, new. Me, yeah, that's why I grab home. <laughs> Deontay Wilder got his ass knocked out again. Oh, but you know what's fair? And I'm just saying, he didn't get knocked out. He got his ass knocked down, just like Fury did. But the only thing is, I I seen the ref. He was just like, "Nope, you're done." And I mean, Wilder was. He, I mean, he shouldn't have got up. It was over, fairly won. But Andre right, Ward let speaks. Me, let me digress. He Hold on, Andre, Andre digress. Ward speaks. I listen. Mm. Andre Ward said that second knockdown was the end of the fight, and he called it on air. Andre Ward works for ESPN. Mm-hmm. Fury is an ESPN fighter. Mm-hmm. Andre Ward has historically criticized Deontay Wilder, and he said. I'm, the, I, the total count ended up being 17 seconds. A lot similar oh, to the told, first. He told Wilder to get to his corner again, of course. A lot similar to the first fight mm-hmm. when when Tyson Fury rose from the dead. Yeah, nigga, about 11, 12 seconds after the you know, I mean, after he got knocked down. But when it's within one and two and it's a good fight, get that motherfucker up, let him keep fighting. Here's where Tyson Fury had the well, biggest advantage in the fight. He came in forty pounds heavier. He's a more skilled boxer, and it's time. But but what tired Deontay out was a mix of him being mauling leaned him, leaned on. Yeah. Head. Let's talk about the headlock that didn't get no points taken away. Well, fam, that's what I'm talking. Like, like, we that's can what, talk about. This few is what things. I hate. Let's talk about a few things. I want to see niggas fight. Who won? Who lost? That's why I fuck with Floyd because Floyd told you niggas, hey, don't let them take it from you. Uh-huh. You have to go in there. 
and win. And just you got what did you the thing is you got to go dominate every round. You, you have to go outscore. Yeah. You have to go outpoint them. If you knock them out, that's great. But outpoint them because if not, if they don't have that sheet to look at and be like, well, damn, he did win. Because I remember when motherfucker was trying to act like Pacquiao got robbed with Floyd until you seen he only landed thirteen percent of his fucking punches. Right. They're you just, can't argue that now. No. They don't argue that no more. They just don't talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, they stopped that. Man, they just don't talk about it. Man. That's just over. Yeah, it's act like it never happened. And then, okay, so here's my thing. Now it's not the fight of the Here, century because it didn't go the way they wanted. Here's, here's my thing. Um, Deontay looked as, he looked better. He looked like he's learning to box. He needs a little more, a little more cardio. You know, get get because even I feel like if he wasn't getting laid on, I don't feel like he could have went all twelve. I feel like he still would have got tired. Well, he gained weight too for the fight. Yeah, see. And this is what I think. Deontay Wilder, I know you're probably not going to ever hear this, but fam. Maybe go down a weight class? No. Or When the greatest man the ever, when the greatest boxer ever, I don't give a, f- if you like him. Who, Mayweather? What the rules say. How we judge fighters. The greatest fighter to ever put on boxing gloves. That's Floyd Mayweather. Oh, offers to train you and you say no? Not offered. He ne- he begged you on national TV. Oh yeah, TV. like please let me. Yeah, he was just like, man, I, I really want to get with Deontay Wilder, man. Like if I get, and then mm. you know I'll be on the on the on the on the YouTube sphere like with boxing and shit like that. All these boxing channels are eating because boxing is one of those sports that don't make ESPN all the time. Yeah. So superstar fighters talk to like YouTubers. That's how they get their name out. That's how they're making their money, really. Mm-hmm. Errol, like every boxing channel I respect and follow has an interview with Errol Spence. And one day the nigga was just watching a live and called in. Like, no, nah, I'm straight. Woo, 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 woo. I'm watching right now. Nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? And they was like, he's like, man, is this really Errol? Like, he's like, yeah, man, it's EJ. Like, and because he had met him and talked to him several times, he's like, he yo, knows, folks, yeah. this is this is him. Like, so with that being said, I just think that like I feel like it was a good fight. I feel like it was a great it was fight. A great fight. It was fun. To I don't watch. feel like it was one of the fights, like one of how they trying to one of the greatest fights of all time. I just I feel, feel like, like it might be fight of the year. I feel like the next fight that we're about to get is about to be fight of the year. Actually, what's the next fight? Terrence Bud Crawford against fucking uh oh shit on um, Charlo. Nah, hell no. Nah. What's my? Dog? I can't believe I just forgot my nigga's name. They both Hall of Famers. Haney. Uh, no, the nigga that Earl him and Earl Spence fought, black dude. It was like when they Porter. were Porter. Yes, my my bad. Sean Porter. My bad, Sean. Sean Porter. My bad, Sean. I you you just, my guy. I did just see that. It just slipped my. You know what I mean? Like, oh, but when is well, I, I feel like Sean, Crawford's you know, gonna, gonna beat him because I, I feel like Porter's had too much of a time layoff. He hasn't fought in a long time. Neither was motherfucking what you call it. Crawford? Yeah, nigga. Who's Crawford? And this is my thing. Crawford ain't never fought nobody as good as Porter. Porter's is, Porter is fought in everybody. A lot of, because okay, Porter's a Floyd Mayweather, except for he's got him, losses. No, he's fought a bunch him, of champions. Him and Earl. And a bunch of, Because yeah. they're on that, they in that same yeah. camp. So, nigga, they fight everybody. everybody yeah. They fought, dog, he's already fought in like six Hall of Famers. He fought what, Pacquiao? Thir- dog, he's not Thurman, look, he fought Pacquiao. He's fought, um, um, did he fight Pacquiao? He did fight Pacquiao. No, Porter didn't fight Pacquiao. Oh. What are you thinking about Thurman? Thurman fought Pacquiao. He fought uh, Canelo. No. This is who I know he fought. I don't think he fought Canelo. Because I think that nigga would beat Canelo, honestly. I think he fought. I don't think Canelo would ever fight Sean Porter. He's too aggressive. Look, this is who I know he's fought. He's fought an EJ. He's fought uh, Danny. Uh, Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia. He's fought in. Um, damn, who else was the other person that he fought that was hella high ranked? Thank you. Damn, I hate that I can't just remember. All right, so, damn, he does got some fights. You see know what I'm saying? He fought, oh, wait, wait, he's got fights. And the only people he really lose to is Hall of Famers. Uh, Devin Alexander, who's okay. a beast. Mal Naji, who's a beast. Right. Uh, Brooke, Kellen Brooke, who's a beast. Right. Um, oh, he lost to Brooke. Yeah, but I'm just talking about fights. He's a beast, though. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad loss. Broner. 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 B Broner. B Thurman. B Thurman. Oh no, he lost to Thurman. Yeah, but that lot that was uh, yeah, that was a little iffy. A lot of people said that was a close oh, he fight. Beat Birdo. Beat Birdo. Um, Grenados. I don't know who that is. I think he won that fight though. He beat. He lost to Garcia, right? Yeah, because Garcia was still undefeated. So he fought. What's his name? He fought Ugas. No, I don't think he was undefeated when he fought. Uh, Porter. 
I think Danny Garcia lost to somebody before he fought EJ. Because that's what made him have to fight EJ. They was all ducking EJ. Until niggas start taking, like, losing their O and be like, damn, nigga, now I got to fight this undefeated nigga to see if I can get my, my shit back up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Four to one. Four to beat Garcia. That's right. That's, that's who gave it to him. Um, yeah, that's who gave him his first loss. Ugas. No, Thurman gave him his first loss. Porter gave him his second. Mm. Uh, lost to Spence. Formell, I didn't watch. The, oh, he fought last year in August. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, shit. I'm I'm late. I thought he had a layoff. Layoff. Nope. And he's got Crawford. You know what it is? It's because he do that boxing shit. Mm. So you be seeing him working, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. He do the fights. That'd be a good fight. Yeah. It's going to be a great fight. Porter's a good fighter. And they're good friends. <laughs> All of them are. Turn enemies now. What thing is boxing is one of those things. Combat sports. Are You'll one be of those friends things. until you get in the ring. Where you're just around each other from like early development. Mm-hmm. You're traveling around doing tournaments. You just know each other. Nigga, you didn't, I know your moves. You know my moves. It's kind of like basketball and football and stuff like that, but not all the way the same. Like, when it's not as saying, personable. When are they saying Spence is supposed to come back? Uh, I'm not sure. But I know he's fighting. Oh, yeah, I think the winner of uh, Crawford Porter. I think he's starting there. Yeah, they're probably just waiting to see what happens with that. And then, they, um, I, well, now I wasn't going to say you guys and Manny Pacquiao, but Manny Pacquiao, they, they ain't want that. He'll beat up you guys, too, though. Oh, he knows that. Beat the shit out of you guys. But um, as far as, like, Deontay Wilder, though, I'm, he's got to stop being a one-trick pony. He needs more cardio. He Somebody needs a – he's getting turn, taught how to box. You can't expect somebody to learn how to box in a year. They're going to – it's going to take time. He has no defense. Yeah, at all. His hands were here. And he's a better oh, boxer. How are you here? <laughs> Get just. <laughs> Deontay Wilder was a freak, man. That that power's ridiculous. Period. His life. I want to see a movie. I want somebody to do a Deontay Wilder movie. Do you know what bummed me out about the fight though? Wilder looked beat a lot of that fight. Like if you look at his face, he was tired. He just. He just looked de- like you can. I'm gonna tell, be honest with you. All you got to do to Deontay, I feel like he was defeated too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All you got to do with Deontay you see the shit with is hit him. The fight, is right? hit him a few good times, or knock him down early. You'll defeat him because he's his ego's so easily bruised. It's not fair to say that because there's only happened. There's only one man to be able to do that. But I'm saying he's got to learn. Some think people, about no. Think okay, about his career well, let, though. Let's talk about people. Think about how his career started. The nigga needed surgery for his daughter. He goes and try out for some boxing shit because if you win the boxing tournament, you win enough money to pay for no, the surgery. I get that. But he what? goes wins that. That lands him to the USA trials. Nigga, he places silver in the. I mean, bronze, bronze in the world. Comes back has been undefeated, knocking out Hall of Famers up until now. So when you say it's like, oh well, if you. You know, if you if you rough him up early, he's not that. It's just like we ain't we ain't seen him get what roughed up the, enough. Okay, but what is one of the things Remember that me? a lot of boxing commentators, a lot of boxers would tell you? What separates a great Hall of, well, a great Hall of Fame champion fighter from just a good fighter is what do you do when your back's against that wall, your ass is touched that canvas, you're getting beat. What do you do? How do you answer? Do you put your head down? You get back up two times. I get that. No, I get it. He got up, but nigga, you get up with vigor. His, I don't like how his head was down and how he looked Fam, defeated. You're talking about, it's not that he was defeated. You're in there with a Hall of Fame boxer that defeated. has had a Hall of Fame pedigree in boxing. Tyson Fury is one of the most skilled fighters. I'm not saying that he's not. In, but you're talk, But Deontay Wilder, if Tyson Fury is on this level and he's the top of the skill, skill-wise, Deontay Wilder is right here. So what you seen was not defeat. It was a puzzle. Like, well, nigga, I have to. That's why he, just, he got frustrated and was like, okay, some, one of us is getting knocked out. I'm just going to have to turn it but into okay, a brawl. Hold on, hold and on. he so did a good job okay, of making wait, it a wait, brawl. Wait, wait. You can't get on me about what my opinion on, you. on how I'm not on you. looked. I'm to not on me, you. Okay, so let me I'm get my, you my shit opinion, off. Okay. To your opinion. To me, he you looked, so defensive, he like, looked, like, he looked defeated. I get it. When he got up from that second knockdown. He didn't. He never got on, back. Man. So he he wasn't he wasn't knocked down three times. Yeah, he was. Was he? Yes. It was okay. five knockdowns. Tyson Fury got knocked down twice. Three knockdowns. The okay. third one, they ended it. Okay. Um, um, See, 
So oh, maybe it was a three knockdown rule too. No, 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 no. no. It, wasn't. it wasn't. It wasn't. They had a point. I think they, they should fight waved again. They off on his way down to the ground. He was already being waved off and knocked out on his way to the yeah, ground. Yeah, and he was conscious. He was already on the being ground, tapped. But he was conscious on the ground. As though. soon as, as he's going to the ground, you see the ref tapping him. Fam, this is all I'm saying. This is all I'm saying. We see this in sports. We see this in sports. And if you're from a certain community, it's hard to kind of like look at these things and not see that. I try to ignore some of them in sports. Man, I didn't even watch. I told you. Well, I didn't tell you, but I'm like, man, I, ain't, I was like, damn. That kind of like bummed my night out, right? I ain't like the way it ended. In my natural time, in my head, I'm like, damn, bro, like. A lot of butt. I'm like, man, this cat. That's boxing, man. This cat literally is boxing in America. A lot of people have been. It's boxing in America. Stopped short. Stopped early. They stopped not him early no, in listen, another country. Fam, I'm not the, talking about the early stoppage. Uh -huh. Like, that's not my point at all. Uh -huh. My point is, I'm talking about the fact that there's overwhelming evidence, nigga, that this motherfucker cheated in the second fight, and, it, and he got away with it. I'm talking about this white privilege that we see in sports. I'm talking about that Tom Brady can get caught cheating, but nobody ever dares put an asterisk by his name. That carries over to the, like, to the consumer. Nigga, before the, the soon as the- Bonds get an asterisk? Yeah, he has the oh, dog. Wow. He's not in the Hall of Fame, fam. Right, he is. That's what I'm trying to talk about. It's shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you be like, wait, hold on, fam. Like, yeah. it's the fact that Allen Iverson don't got a job for the Sixers. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. Steve Nash is coaching the Nets, nigga. Right, and they never even played for him. A super team. Ain't even played for him. The fuck? <laughs> and, what's, and Mark Jackson don't got a job. Hey. I don't support him not having a job, but at least we know there. Okay, there's a thing there. He said some things that, it, even though it was in a religious, religious yeah, setting, you're right, you're right. I and that's mean, still, do, and that's I still. No, no, wait. That. You're right though, because that's still a fucking slant. Because yeah. what other man could be giving a sermon based on the Bible and lose his job for it? Right. Because it offended, and that's what the, we, we're gonna talk about a little later about this LBGTQ mafia. I'm not talking about the community. I'm talking about the LBGTQ mafia that we need to start paying attention to. You know, because they said when black people start fighting for liberation, that some of us were extremists. Hey, Martin Luther King's cool. We might not agree with him all the way, but that Malcolm guy, mm -mm. he's a bad one. Get on he's extreme. Okay, so then you ain't gonna tell me that the, the LBGTQ Young community doesn't have any extremists. Hey, fact, fact, doesn't have any that. any extremists in that. Segue into that. We're we're you know doing what I'm saying. Wilder thing. No, no, we, segue into that's that. That's not no no. Now you doing my show? Like, oh my bad. Y'all got it. I got it in place. Uh, right we gonna do that because well, we're going to the. <laughs> I'm over this Wilder thing. I don't know why I just got over it so fast. <laughs> my bad. Keep going, bro. No, my nigga, because. You act like we not live doing a show, nigga. This nigga, man. I'm a dickhead for I'm that over. one. I, I mean, don't know how that happened. Just catch yourself, fam. Like, yeah, hey, because you could, you could write out the show. <laughs> my nigga. Go ahead, go ahead. You want to do the next one? My bad. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, man, what you want to do? <laughs> my nigga, it's a way to switch topics. It is. Because I'm done with this shit, Well, too. no, no, no. I hey, to, and I guess who brought this topic up? Me. For the world. Me. This is his topic. It is. What the fuck you mean, nigga? You're going to cut me off like I'm the one dragging this shit over. You want to bring this shit up? I didn't want to talk about this fucking fight because I'm still not over it. <laughs> nigga, because I got to see, man, shout out to Aki TV. Aki TV do the screen play by play. And I'm just like, nigga, I get that, bro, fam. fam. Okay, no, no, no. They got to fight no, again. I don't mean, they no, no, matter of fact, I, I apologize for cutting you off. What did you see, the video you were talking about? What was the video? You did, We never got to talk about it. What happened? What are they trying to say happened in the fight? It's not trying anything. Oh, 17 listen, seconds on the map. Listen to me. Okay, okay. It's the same thing that the Hall of Famer that never lost, that's calling the fight, say, yo, he was making a fuss of it on air. Like, Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like, the fight's <laughs> over. Like, dog, when you see when Deontay Wilder knocked him the second time, mm -hmm. he jumped. He's like, oh, yeah, I got him. Because when you a puncher like that, they know. You know. Just like Tyson Fury you know. knew when he got him. Like, oh, I got his ass. Yeah. So he got him, dog. Tyson Fury's down. Go look. I just dare everybody to go look at that second knockdown and watch. Don't even count. Just watch how the ref is. Boy, it damn stops count makes him. The ref damn corner. near helped that nigga up when he was already like, was like, you straight, you good, like you know, doing that type of shit. Like, go get that nigga, like, <laughs> and and that's how it feels, dog. That's why the crowd Wilder is not f like f like a f well, he's famous, but he's not a that world. He's not renowned. no, he's not a beloved yeah, yeah fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's more loved overseas than he is here yeah. because 
In Asia, and they be like, he be knocking shit down. Knocking shit the like, fuck out. Fuck That's all King that skill Kong, shit. Nigga. We know skill. That's we heavily Kong. skill over here. Like that nigga's shit. over there. Oh, you gonna go? I ain't, I wouldn't say. I didn't say that. You know what I mean? You gonna put him in that jacket? Like no, <laughs> over there. To convert. Well, I, I'm not speaking for them. I'm just saying. Like they, I noticed that he said that in Asia and stuff like that. They love. They it. they don't jack. They they look at the like anomaly of it. Like damn, they look at his story and be like, he has no skill and he's knocking out these world class fighters like that. That's <laughs> amazing. Dog, I don't care what nobody say. That's amazing. But boxing purists get annoyed at that shit and be like, nigga, he ain't that good of a fighter. All he do is load up on the right hand. He don't hide the jab. He don't do this. He don't do that. So he's all I was trying to say is he's not a beloved boxing champion, right? Mm-hmm. People have been kind of waiting to see him lose. Like, nigga, that trick. That one, I'm you know, getting like, sick of seeing him. I don't want to see him right? lose no more, nigga. So he's I lost. didn't want to see him lose the Fury at all. He's lost twice. I didn't like, want to see him lose the Fury society, at all. Like, I'm tired of seeing this nigga losing. I get you. I don't want to see that either. I didn't but, want to see him lose at all. But it's because tr- boxing is tribal, and it makes you like you know what I'm saying get into your tribal bag. So I get that. But no, because I don't look at Fury as a regular white. I look at him as an overseas. I don't put him. What are you talking about? I just don't put him in. The, what are you talking about? To me, that's asinine, and you have to unpack that. Why? You have to unpack that to me. Like, what do you mean? Like, oh, okay. What do you mean? I don't look at. Why do you think that he sells? Why do you think that America? Was no, cheering I'm for saying, him. I'm saying more here, than, yeah, it makes sense. But I don't look at Tyson Fury as the great white hope against us as boxing as it will be if there was an American here doing what Tyson Fury was doing to Deontay. Well, to me, I don't. Look, this is what I don't do because it's easy to do this, and people get mad. And now you're gonna understand this because you're from the D. Niggas get real touchy. If they ever hear any slint that you're doing that to Eminem with rap. Right. But nigga, if you're nice, you're nice. That's not our culture. And we only got to apologize for nigga American culture because that's not black American culture. Right. If a motherfucker is nice, He's you're nice to black people. Yeah. Hey, black people, just like the Asian community and just like, you know, certain Hispanic communities, fam, it was a large time of our lives that we only watched white people on TV. Because only white people could be on TV. Only white people could be in the movies. All the Disney characters when I was a kid were fucking white. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear that yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't have to apologize for this motherfucking sensitive ass. Like, no, nigga. There's a certain group of sector of people in this country that are racist and that come from racism and that practice racism. I'm not a part of that. So if a motherfucker's dope and he's and he's white, nigga, he dope. Nigga, ain't never got, nigga you know how fucking, you know what I used to do around my house? Watching Jason Williams white chocolate highlights, nigga. Trying to my throw mother them almost passes, killed nigga. me. I broke a vault, nigga. I'm nah, nigga trying to do all type of shit, nigga. What are you talking <laughs> to do about? That pass off the elbow. Come nah, on, done fam. Fuck, you done fucked up a Come, lot of shit. I don't want to hear, it. Elbow, nigga. You nigga. never heard white pe- black people, nigga. Like, dog, the way the way a white America would hate a Deontay Wilder or a Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. We didn't do that, nigga. Black America's not like that to fucking none of these cats. We no, don't do I that. Know. We don't do that, fam. I be having niggas argue with me. I remember when I, oh, nigga, Tom Brady, boy. What you know about Tom, you know what I mean? No, we, we not, that's not our culture. No, it's not. That's not our natural instinct to do those things. So that's all I'm saying. Like, But when you see this shit, it just correlates is all I'm trying to say. It right. makes you think about all these other incidents. And it sucks. And it's, it's, it's tiresome. Because as an, you want you know, as a sports guy, we sports guys, you're like, hey, man, just like you said. Hey, but. Niggas get bad counts all the time. But on top of the the, the questionable Last second fight. fight. Yeah. And then the fact that Tyson Fury did everything he could to not have to fight him, right? And then for the day of the fight, we hear nationwide from every reporter that, yo, there's an issue with Tyson Fury's gloves. And then you hear the Nevada gaming community, the same gaming committee. And this is why I think, and I'll end this because I do want to get off to this. This is why I think Dante Deontay Wilder should have fucking fucked with Floyd. It's not always about the man. It's not always about the man. It's about the equipment and the training. Nigga, it's about everything that that man brings and everything that he touches. And Floyd is God body in Vegas because you can think that whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas and all these cool lights and shit is what makes Vegas money. Mm-hmm. Floyd made Vegas money. Lots of it. Floyd made this state money. And every judge, elected official, and big money getter in this place that's worth any kind of pool, has any kind of pool or leverage, they know that. So when my Dinah 2 happened 
And they, he tried to do the same thing with them fucked up ass, warped ass overseas niggas, some back alley uh, plant gloves that he got and got shipped in. Hey, the gaming commission? Because at this point, they was against, they was tired of seeing Floyd win. Yeah. They was tired of his pro black ways in his own way and not the way that they're used to. Right? So they was ready to see Floyd lose. The Nevada Gaming Commission sanctioned those gloves. Floyd's trainers was having the same conversation that Mike Don that uh Wilder's trainers was having. Like, oh, that's some bullshit. Look at these gloves. They were trying to talk logic. Like, look how thick these gloves are, and these are his thin gloves versus his glove. Like, what are we doing? That, that I'm you can feel my knuckle. He said, you, I can feel my knuckle through it. I could do woo. Okay. So he said, man, I got to have Wilder come down. And it was like, whoa, 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 why? No, no, don't bring him down because if he comes down, it doesn't matter. The gaming commission, and he kind of said it like, the Nevada gaming commission already signed off on these gloves, so it's nothing, nothing that he can say. And I thought to myself, yes, he can. Because if he's... He can if, pull out the fight. Exactly. Sometimes you have to know how to serve your royalty. And Floyd has mastered that. And he's worked and crafted a fucking niche in this world to where he has a, a podium to stand on. Floyd walked down there and was like, because it's cause the money team, they went and got Floyd. Like, oh, hell no, all right, bullshit. Yo, Floyd, Floyd came down there like, man, let me see the gloves. He said, like, I done fought a thousand times. Let me see him. And as soon as he put the glove in his hand, he's like, man, fuck that. Man, hell no. No, and, they have Floyd test and, <laughs> and so you know, that nigga walks right I'm like, man, fuck that, nigga. And he's like, whoop, whoop, nigga. He's like, man, this is what it is. So guess what happened? Now you got to wear the gloves I pick for you, nigga. Yeah. Because I'm the A side of this. And you think Mike Donna, or you think even uh, Tyson Fury, who has money, you know, I mean, I know he's making a lot of money, but he has, he has had some money troubles and, and things like that. I'm just saying, he's on the comeback on the second tour. Mm -hmm. You think that he's about to leave that money on the table just for those gloves? Nope, nigga, he'd have, he'd have conformed. But this is why he serenades the crowd after he wins in America, because he spoke about it before. America's racist to black people. So he knows that. He knows that they like think about that in a spot, sport like boxing, man. Fuck you, nigga. They don't even care about you in your own country. Yeah. They they want me to win. Nigga. They cheering for me. They're giving me the A side treatment. They're giving me this. They're giving me that. They're giving me the benefit of the doubt. They never talk about this motherfucker's transgressions anymore. After he's done with them, they don't talk about them. Hey, if Floyd Mayweather got caught bribing a farmer to lie about some drugs and shit that he had by his meat. Uh, every time Floyd all, got into the ring and fought, they, they would have been talking about, about every that. Time. Every well, time. I wonder They'd if Floyd ate that meat again this time. Talk. Hey, Allen Iverson's a motherfucking great basketball player, one of the greatest football players ever played high school state football in Virginia. He's an All-American in two sports, has a legendary story. He beat a fucking 15-year sentence, <laughs> right? All these things. You know what they bring up about him? Practice. Mm -hmm. They make fun of the practice rant But they never tell you that Hey man he was saying that Because they kept asking him about practice When everyone in that room Knew that his best friend Had just got murdered But they're threatening to find him If he's not there To answer the question So he said I'm here What's up Y'all don't want to talk to me About how black people Out here dying though right You want to talk to me About how, how About what Why I was late for practice Fuck Hey I, I'm you. the franchise player Did, Newsflash Franchise players Don't even practice Right what are you talking about? You think LeBron James is at practice in the middle of the season? You think he's practicing? He might be at the facility, mm -hmm. but he ain't on the goddamn his, court. And, and if he and is on the court, uh, fam, it's because he, if it is on the court, he's going to be doing the same shots he be doing at Bronny's games. Mm -hmm. The more like, layups. And, you know how you're doing a JV playing or something? You go in there and warm up, get a little layup real quick, and, and you're like, yeah, yeah, man, that's what he's doing. Hit him with the... <laughs> right? Or you might... You might that, come on, time, fam. You know, just get up on Come him. on. So it's just one of those things, man, like... I think the world is starting to realize that more. Um, it's, it's being constantly in, in, in people's faces. And I think that it all just, hey, man, like, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's a new day. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Um, did you have, I remember we had some Lucy's. We were done with all our Lucy's. That's all our Lucy's, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get this rocking, man, because yeah. this is going to be in and out. Uh, Pause. Thank you. <clears throat> Pause. What's up, moms? Um, oh, Ocean Fleming. Pimp, right? Oh, man, this brother is much more. Um, he's an accused pimp. I mean, what he's being charged with is pimping and all types of crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. No, he's, that, yeah, at, at one point in time, he was, yes. 
But I'm going to just give it a little backdrop, man. Okay, so Ocean Fleming, mm. they call him the boss of the city, man. This dude is the closest thing we have to like an Alpo. Nah, I, I, no, nah, I can't do that. Because mm. Alpo is, even though to me Alpo is a street legend, he's, a, he's, he's kind of a godfather of hip-hop in a lot of ways, of modern-day hip-hop. And But there's still a, in, in terms of the street vernacular, like, you know, there's still a, a jacket on him, right? Right. So I think that I would compare him to like a modern day Big Meech type character. Okay, okay. Um, but right here in Vegas, man, like I don't know Ocean personally, but you know what I mean? I grew up back and forth in the state and like, you know, you hear his name and Cash would always assume that I knew him. Hey man, you know Ocean. And I'd be like, man, no, I've, heard, I've been hearing about that cat for a long time, but we live in two totally different worlds and lanes. You know what I'm right. saying? Ocean um, tells his story, man. Um, whereas I'm not going to get deep into his story because he has a lot of big things coming out. And I don't really want to kind of spoil that. I want, I want that brother to tell his, tell his tales. You know what I mean? But I'm just going to give you an outlier because his story is so crazy. Netflix is picking it up in their, with their documentary series in 2020. It'll be out 2022. That's how crazy this is. Um, I know I'm talking about even when I got up to Reno, I'd be in the Bay or something like that. Like his name pops up, right, all around the country, right. You rap artists, you know what I mean? Uh, certain celebrity types. So Ocean Fleming is a is a Las Vegas native man that um. He got you know early off the porch. He tells a tale about some uh, Hispanic men moving into his neighborhood. Um, and seeing that he was, you know, that's what like they often do, uh, scout young black men to, to, to uh, push their product, man. And, you know, basically that's what happened with Ocean. Ocean was um, kind of recruited in a way to, to do these deeds. Um, he was ripe for it, he was game for it, and he was successful at it. So he goes on a, on a, on a spree of, you know, selling, selling drugs, hustling and stuff like that, making a lot of money. And he finds himself in prison on a prison bed. He's in a room uh, in a cell with an old timer mm. who happens to come from the pimping and pandering game, right? And he decided to, because of the, the 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 history of his mother and father, he decided that you know what, drugs ain't it. I'm a, I'm gonna go into this other thing, and. He started doing like, you know, the whole, you know, we're in Las Vegas, man. Um, he started doing the whole pimping and pandering here. Um, this is at a time when like the authorities are just now like starting to, I mean, maybe formulate and starting to treat uh, pimps like drug dealers. You know, I guess pimping and pandering was a slap on the wrist criminally. Yeah, it was. It I, I was. wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't know until I found out. Yes, it wasn't, um, that, it wasn't even a big offense. That's why they upgraded the trafficking right. now. So that, exactly. So in his case, man, look, I'm going to go over some of the key players. Ocean gets arrested, gets out, um, goes into this new, new thing. Mm. And he takes some of the D-boy ways with it. So, like, you know, he had been shot a few times. He said he even lost a toe. Like, he, he didn't feel comfortable in gator bottoms. He had the money for those things and all that. And he had the lore to be a Like, it was easy transition for him. He already had women around. He was already interacting with the same type of women. It just all worked out for him. And he said, he's like, man, I'm just, you know, this is what we're going to do. So he was kind of leader. He was like the leader of his, of his, of his crew. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what we're going to do. They transformed into like some basically, if you would, modern day hip hop piece okay. that you see today. Cats that dress like me and you, right, right, like um, you know, like you used to could look at it, you could see a pimp from around the across the way, like oh, that's a pimp over there. No, right? you can't now. Now, like us. you know, they they dress comfortable. They dress, you know, in every fashion and stuff like that that they want. Um, there's no set uniform. Ocean. Um, meets a young man by the name of well this thing is crazy this young man sees a guy comes around he sees Ocean and he's like yo this dude like man he's kind of that dude like who is this and he asks about him and one of the dudes from out of town I guess um, that was out here doing his thing he's just like you don't know who that is man he's like the mayor of the city bro he run this shit he's from here he's actually from Vegas and so he's like oh man I got I got a link with him this dude ends up being Molly Maul so one day Ocean is out doing his thing, chilling. 
And Molly Maul pulls up on him in like a drop top Wraith or something like that, right. Phantom or something. Like, yo, bro, get in, man, let's go kick it. Buying bottles, whining and dining, like, man, you know, they start, they, they, they make a relationship, they become friends, they start doing things together. Um, Ocean tells the story as basically he understood that, Molly Maul understood that like, if I have this guy on my team, not only is anybody, no one ever gonna bother me, you know what I mean, but I'm gonna like make even more money. Mm -hmm. um, I think Molly Maul's thing was a, a little bit of everything, uh, allegedly. You know, I don't, I don't know what the brother does, well, but they caught Molly Maul on some like kitty porn shit, didn't they? Well, this is the thing. Um, pimping and pandering, I think drug uh, narcotics distribution, things like that. Uh, one of the other things that come up in this Ocean um, interview and stuff like that is that Molly Maul allegedly bailed uh, Big U out of prison. Damn. For two million, because when it was all said and done, Molly Maul was basically a a, a mole. Um, he was a guy that like the feds and the and the and the, and the police here um, had he had a he he started a relationship with uh, a few officers here, and I'm assuming that he was doing his thing and he probably got caught. Mm -hmm. um, but he had money, so he paid them off, and that became an ongoing relationship. And this happened before he meets Ocean. Ocean is a stand-up dude, lives by the street code, die by the street code, will kill by the street code, allegedly. He's not, and, and that, that, that essence of him is actually what saves his life. That's what's crazy about this whole story. Because as the feds start moving in and they start building cases on certain high-level pimps in the area, right? Vegas is like a pimp playland. So you can set up shop here and Get, get get books and jackets on cash from Memphis, Florida, and all over the place. And the feds were just doing what they do. And they kept noticing that every time they thought they had Molly, he would, like, evade them or, like, you know, something would come up. And they kind of start getting a win, like, man, something ain't right down there in Vegas. Right? Because, you know, feds keeping their taps on it. Right. Then Ocean and Molly... Um, they have some kind of falling out. Oh, you know, you can't you can't hang with the sharks and fool them. Right. Like that's the problem about the wolves, nigga. Like that's why a wise one would tell you, man, just feed the wolves mm -hmm. before you 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 get on the menu. Yeah. yeah for right. You come to food. So, man, Ocean is a wolf if there ever was one, fam. Respectfully, and so he's doing him. He's honorable, dude. But he's starting to see little funny things about Molly that's not holding up to the stature of the man that has million dollar penthouses all over the world and you know a fleet of cars and big money this, big boss. You, you got killers and D-boys saluting you and, and hanging out with you. But turns out since 08, he's been feeding the feds, everybody, right? Um, Ocean. He's not really wind of that, you know, and he moves a certain way that he doesn't have like a lot of police interaction. Right. So it was like he wasn't really dealing with that. Now he finds out from through a female that Maul had, you know, Maul because Maul paid the police, but that's his right hand man at the time. So he's like, hey, what? So when he asked him about it, he was like, oh yeah, man, I was gonna tell you, but I think we got him on. I, you know, I want to make sure we're straight first. He kind of talks his way around it. So Ocean, being the street dude that he is, he's like, bet we're good. We gonna know if we getting hit. We gonna know when the next person like we good, right? So, turns out only you know only one of them was good. Only Molly was good because eventually <laughs> the boys came and asked him about Ocean. Now this is his dude that he's doing everything. They kind of doing things together. They out here, and instead of like spinning him, like no, nah, he's no nah, leave him. Or like you know what I'm saying? Like he's off limits. We ain't right. After him. He didn't hold him down like that. Yeah. He he cooperated. Now, Ocean tells a story that in the way he's telling the story, he's like, man, event, you know, Ocean is a real deep dude. Like, I can't wait for the world to hear his story because he's so much better at telling it. You know what I mean? He's a very artic articulate, charismatic guy. And he breaks this shit down scientifically, bro. And he's just like, man, I'm knowing this guy. And I'm thinking that basically when they hit him, he started noticing that like, yo, we got the police working for us, bro. Like, tell him, you know. Like, like, what are we getting out of it? He said he feels like the police sensed that first they was on some boss shit. Like, he was the boss. 
But then they realize in, in dealing with this man's character, like, man, he ain't no wolf. He just got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Like, hey, who is this dude right here selling dope over there? You know him. So they just, the cops did what they do. They just flipped him. They went from working for him and making sure him and his girls and stuff like that didn't get arrested, certain things to get, them, get to taken him out, working for them. to him working for them. Because they, they some goons. And they was like, man, this dude's soft. He ain't no killer. Like, so they stopped fearing him. It was like, man, well, well hey man, they getting their payment and they like, yo man, tell us about this dude. And so he just obliged, right? Make a, to get short on in the story, Ocean is hit with, I wanna say, I, you know, 60 count indictment, something mm -hmm. crazy, right? Out of, you know, they, they hit him, bro, they hit him out of nowhere, charge him with all type of, you know, uh, pimp and pandering, abuse, Tra trafficking, domestic um, violence, all these things, right? And he's saying the whole time he refuses a deal, right? They gave him like try to give him a sweeter deal. He refuses it. It's, the, 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 it's a high in the city at least. It's a high profile case. Ocean saying like, "Yo, you know my body, you know what I do, right? I never made no quarrels in that." The judge asked him at sentencing, like, yo, why, Ocean, why, why aren't you taking this deal? And he looked at her and said, I owe y'all five years. The shit that I did, that, that y'all got me on, that I got caught with, like, yo, I shouldn't have did that shit. That's my fault, I was wrong. Yeah, That's a five years, everybody else in the world, that's five years. Like, I've been going to jail and in and out of jail and shit like that since I was a kid. I know the legal system better than, just as well as everybody in here. That's why, you, you know what I mean? So that's a five year thing. He said, man, all that other stuff they got me on, I'm never copping to that. I didn't do those things. That's a that's a dub. They hit him with life, bro. <laughs> For four years or so, he's behind prison bars telling any and everybody that would listen, like, yo, they set me up. Molly Maul, they set me up. But this is the thing, hold on. He let me not say to speak out of turn. Because he didn't snitch on Molly. Right. He never said Molly Maul's paying this dude. I know it. And he never did none of that. He stayed true to the code. When he got hit, he said, yo, it's going to be a million dollars to bail me out. No, it was before he got hit with the life. He tried to get Molly to bail him out. And Molly, that's when Molly told him that he had just bailed Big U out. He couldn't do it. So he said, okay, that ain't, you know, something iffy. Like, nigga, I know we, we getting money. Like, they froze all my shit, bro. Like, just give me the million. I'm going to get that back to you. Right, because these these these, these are big players, bro. This ain't no nickel and diamond type operations, right? That's why Drake is in the picture. Mm -hmm. That's why Justin Bieber is a part of the case, nigga, and 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 being discussed because what blew this whole shit open is the feds after the police put away um, Ocean. Mm -hmm. Ocean had did some interviews where he, you know, got on there and told his story. He just told his story what happened. So the feds get wind of this. They started looking into who is this Ocean character. Now, it was a time when in this country, you had to do something crazy to go to the feds. You didn't go to the feds for continuous domestic violence and shit like that, right? For a couple of ounces. You had to be like a big dog. Mm -hmm. um, they knew because of like the, you know, the money and the private prisons and stuff like that and the bureaucracy, the feds have been forced to take in a lot of what they feel the lesser criminals. But that's why they, those kind of people get deals and get on parole, parole faster, because they just want them out of their hair. So they're investigating LV, LA, Las Vegas PD and Metro and stuff. And what they're doing is they're doing a joint investigation. Ocean's tucked away, doing life. Who's listening to a lifey, right? Like, yeah, nigga, we all innocent. He on life as well. Everybody like, yeah, nigga, we all innocent. So he do because of his status in, in, in the game and his fandom, he just reluctantly does like maybe a, a, a couple of interviews just with some dudes that he already know that he fuck with a platform. It was like, man, y'all getting into this YouTube shit. Like my story kind of popping. I'll throw y'all a bone. It wasn't on no like help me get free. But when he tells the story, dog, I'm telling you, the shit is so compelling. And when he goes into these details of things, it's so salacious, dog, that I'm not, 
wait to, wait till you hear that y'all hear the end of this man so now the key players in this ocean fleming the accused you have detective warren gray of las vegas vice squad and then there's las vegas police department uh and also on the las vegas police department uh organized crime unit then there's a detective bachman detective bachman is a smooth talking african-american brother that's intelligent that's also a police officer um that rolls up the ranks within the um, organized crime division because um, I don't know. I just think that honestly, he was a young black dude that was using like urban tactics. Ocean compares him to Denzel Washington's character in training and training day. So basically, this this is Las Vegas Lonzo right here, right? One of them Lonzo cops, Sam. So Las Vegas Lonzo. This is the crazy shit about it. Detective Bachman is one of the, and, and police officer Warren Gray, they're two of the officers that's on Molly's payroll, allegedly. Right? Yeah. So now they're on the payroll. So they, when they go after him, they throw him, they basically gonna throw all, you know, they gonna, he gonna be the fall, like get, get, get Ocean out of there, he the fall. Um, one of Ocean's female companions, uh, was late, was then coerced by one of these police officers. Um, they took her from Vegas to New York, put her up in a million dollar penthouse, paid her thousands of dollars a month, elaborate shopping sprees, um, engaged in sexual exploits with her. And then on the morning of Ocean Fleming's case as a nice bow on a beautiful present, surprise witness, <laughs> flipped her on him, right? So, that's one part of it. They went and got some other females that he had had relations with. You know, Ocean was a pimp. Um, and they got them to testify that, oh, yeah, you know. And these are women that allegedly he hadn't been dealing with uh, and so on and so forth. Um, he gets a – Detective Bachman, this is where it gets deep, okay? So now Ocean goes to prison. He's fighting his appeal situation in, in, in prison, right? He hires a lawyer that had just switched over from being a, the one of the youngest judge judges in the country to a defense attorney. And that was brilliant because she came with a lot of resources and she came with a lot of insight. This young woman is the one that brought him the tapes and the visuals of Molly meeting with the feds and broke it to him that, oh, Molly's a fed. Like, that's how they got this on you. That's why none of this makes sense. That's why they're accusing you of all these things and, and having all these witnesses pop up that you ain't seen. That's why they have all this testimony. You know what I'm saying? That's why he never was there when it, you know, just right at the, so it breaks it all down, right? He calls him, lets him know like, boy, you, you know, you a rat, boy, you rat fool. Dead that, boom, get off the phone, like, just so he know what time it is. Now, Ocean's, a, Ocean's strong out here. You know what I mean? He's, he's strong. So, presumably like you know he's getting the word back from mutual parties like yeah man i don't know what's going on with molly like i told him nigga, he should just come see you because you know what i mean like you always down to have a conversation like I, a mutual friend is telling him this like something must be wrong with y'all because he said fam the nigga just at the house getting high and drunk smoking partying like binging like saying man that's fucked up man i mean they lied to me like I, evidently molly you know, the cop, they, you know they did what they do they played him too it was like, oh yeah, man, don't trip, man. We're gonna do this so that way you don't got we don't gotta take you down and then he gonna end up being, you know, like it'd be out in like eighteen months. Ocean says in the interview, he says, Man, I'm so glad that that didn't happen. He said, Because if I only went to jail for eighteen months, I'd have been right back out to my million dollar scheme. And I wouldn't have got the blessing. This was his way out. You know what I'm saying? Dog, he's facing not facing life. He's sentenced to life. He's already in the can. Mm-hmm. The story goes cold for about two years. Nobody's talking about him. He's starting to die down. The feds break away from the Las Vegas Metro PD invest joint investigation and lets the authorities know, like, no, they're part of our investigation. We're looking into them now. Something ain't right. Yeah. Right? So they next. Because what happened is now Molly's out here. He's running around free doing what he do, but he's not as, he ain't, you know, he's having more incidents now. 
right. more things is going up, nigga. The, the, the jacket then put on you. You got to move a certain way. Cats is doing business with you, not paying you because what you did to all, you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff going on. So everything ain't going smooth. And then Detective uh, Bachman, because he put away Ocean, and now he start, and he's using this Molly, Molly to put away all these pimps, all these big-time pimps from all over the country that was here making millions and millions of dollars in this community. They all on a string are starting to get locked up. Boom, 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 boom. And it's this one detective that every time he's beating his chest and he's like, yeah, because if you come to Las Vegas, you're going to respect our young women and we're going to protect our daughters, right? But all the while, this is a man that's selling drugs, doing drugs, planting drugs on people, and forcing prostitutes to have sex with, to have sex with him. Right, you know what happened to Detective Bachman? He re- he he quit the police force because he got picked up on a VH1 TV show called Saving Our Girls or some shit like that. Oh, shit. He was one of the cops, so he got to go to Hollywood. Nigga, like off off my boy old nigga. He got to go to Hollywood off these young play- off these cats in the streets doing what they doing, right? So Ocean and them is seeing this, and then so the feds are seeing all this stuff, and then the feds are seeing like, because they start tapping into shit, and they see like, hey, this guy be at Molly Mall house a lot. You start looking into Molly Mall, like, oh, this dude's a pimp. This nigga, oh, he's involved in a couple of drug transactions. Okay, why is this vice cop? Okay, we're starting to see that. And then while Justin Bieber was there for a birthday party of that of this said cop's daughter at Molly Mall's house, Justin Bieber has a, a, a image of him going viral with a, he, where he's holding this little monkey. That's Molly's monkey. The feds know that from surveillance. They start snooping, tapping in. Now it's like, okay, well, what was going on? And on the video, one of the videos that they discovered, the detective's daughter is referring to Molly Mall as Uncle Molly. So they're just like, oh, y'all got a relationship. Like, yeah, that ain't, like, that ain't just no... <laughs> you didn't just... You know, because you're a vice cop and you knew this celebrity, like you made it happen. Like, no, nah, nigga, your daughter's calling him uncle. They got a relationship. Y'all, y'all, y'all family. How y'all so close when you're vice and he's involved in these things? Mm-hmm. You know, the feds can know you doing this, but that don't mean they coming after you. So they knew Ocean's body. The feds go to Ocean in prison while he's serving life. And the first thing he tell them, man, eat one. I ain't no, you know, <laughs> I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't, I don't know nothing. Right, yeah, I ain't about to play me because he's never thinking like that is gonna be beneficial. They're like, man, whatever. I, I'm already a dub over here. I'm just working on my appeal to try to make this not a life sentence. But he said, man, he just had he just had small children, and and one of the things he said that he learned in the game is that men take care of their family and their kids, no matter what. So he said that was was what was killing him the most. And he said, man, the the, the feds was like, hey, man, just to get his attention, they walk in and like, yo, man, we don't want to hear that shit. We know who you are. We know what you're about. But we also know that on such and such a date at this time, you did this. We know that three years ago, four years ago, that this went down. It was a double, bam, bam, bam. Two people left, you know, ended up homicide, and, and we, we, we know you. So they basically was pointing out shit, giving his word. Like, according to him, they pointing out things that, like, and then one of the uh, FBI agents was like, Fam, if we wanted to, 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 to nail your ass, like, just those three right there will, will keep you here for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Then they took the paper, like, we don't care about that. We want to talk to you about something. Why did you say that this was all a setup and that the prosecutor and the judge and the lead cop, the cop that arrested you and his senior uh, officer, like, what, what are you talking like? You know what I mean? Give us, tell us the story again. And he's like, oh, man, look, man, this is what it is. And he breaks down the same story and he tells them. But what he don't know is that they've had years of investigating, wiretaps, photoing, and all this stuff to come, like to literally visual. Everything. Yeah, to corroborate everything. So when he says that, they're like, okay, they're bet. Like, oh, check, 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 check. check. Yeah, check, check. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Oh, oh bet. Yeah, we up, couldn't check, figure that up, one check. out. You gave oh, us the answer what it to is. that. Oh, so, okay. like, it was, he did it in a, like, he just told his story. Right. And without the, naming really, like, no, and that's the thing, the whole time he kind of protected, he wasn't really, like, going after Molly Mall. He, the only time he went in on Molly Mall is when he goes on, like, if he was to call into this network, like, to this joint right here, and he'd be like, yeah, man, that motherfucker's a rat. But he wasn't like yelling at them like, oh, Molly working with this cop and this cop. But what it was, after a while, they was like, hey, we know that your boy Molly is a, is, a, is a rat. We know that he's working with this cop and this cop. What's the other, like who else is he, you know what I'm saying? 
And then the dude, Detective Bachman, the uh, paid full cop, I mean, not paid full cop, the, uh, what, the nigga that's acting like Denzel. And Alonzo. Alonzo. Alonzo Bachman over here. They looking at him like, man, he in all type of shit. But nigga, he, he, he just leaves the force to go into Hollywood and start acting and shit like that and getting money that way. You know what I mean? Not even acting. He's like on a reality show, like where they're going after like pimps and all that stuff, right? Um, he's made himself famous and made some money. Well, when this all comes out through the indictment, all indictments and all this shit, and people start, and the, the media start getting all this shit, he gets a new trial. And then now he wins. Like he's free. Like he's out. Like, damn, Ocean was getting life, and he out because not only is he out, he has a multi million dollar lawsuit, presumably, against Clark County, against Las Vegas Police Department. Against the prosecutor. Against Bachman personally. Against Bachman personally. Against Officer uh, Detective Warren Gray. And then he said there was, he had a other partner that used to work with him. That's a female that's still out. You know what I mean? All these people were still out. Now, Detective Bachman, after his show run went through and the Hollywood shit didn't work out, he tried to come back and get his job back. But by that time, all this shit didn't came out. And it they was, was like, nigga, you that's a dub. <laughs> so then he ends up in Los Angeles driving like limos or something like that. For like a some kind of sleazy organization, like that's ended up being like a, a massive sex ring. Like he's just a thug with a badge, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's running around here doing all this nonsense. And what happens is, is that uh, in the first retrial, it was found that they tampered with the jury, fam, and they got caught because the feds was already up on their shit and was like, and this is what Ocean said. He's like, I can't stress enough, man. My character, the fact that I, I'm not a snitch, the fact they just could not, they know, like, if he's saying this, this shit happened. Yeah, he don't go fabricate He'll shit. die before he snitch on somebody. Like, that's right. what he'll do. There's some people that say that. There's some people that talk like that. He said, but he but then there's sad. some of some of us that are in this world that, not me included, I'm not a street dude whatsoever, but there's certain dudes that come from a certain and elk. It's not the environment, because all of us come from that environment in a lot of ways. It's it's their certain persona and personality that that's their own little code, right? And they're not doing that. They're not ever telling on anybody. They'll and they know this. This dude's been going to jail since he was twelve years old for robbing gun stores here in Las Vegas. The cat used to steal a car, put on a seatbelt, ram the shit into the gun store, jump out, load up, reverse out at twelve, fam. He went to jail for it at like eleven. 12 and then 13 <laughs> this is ocean this is a dude that made millions of dollars selling drugs and millions of dollars alongside women selling themselves right this is what he this is his life and everybody fucked with him like in the street world he didn't really have a lot of enemies and things like that it, it, it seems like you know what i mean i'm sure in the streets you know he was beefing but when he got into the pimp game like you know pimps like congratulate each other so he was getting fan mail from all over the country when he got sentenced to life. There were celebrities shouting him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, not even celebrities that you think, bro. I heard Mark Jackson shout this dude out. Like, oh, yeah, man, you know, come to Vegas. You know, everybody was in there. Like, you know, Ocean was in there. Like, he's talking about, like, celebrity parties and shit like that. This mm-hmm. is that dude. So he stuck away. Now, his celebrity is, is his celebrity. But when the story breaks out, they in the documentary that's coming out, they compare it to the Rampart scandal. Dog, is that deep? It goes all the way up. One of the judges kicked in one of these niggas' pimp's doors, nigga by herself, like with some other niggas, some goons type nigga, like where my daughter at? Like, Vegas was wild out here for a minute. Like, it was a little wild out here. You know what I'm saying? This shit's reading like a movie. So, tampered jury, um, and they found out that the man was like at, at the behest of the prosecution. He got sentenced to 15 years. And even in the interview, Ocean, I don't have his name because Ocean wouldn't tell his name. He wouldn't tell his name. And it's just hard to find it. They go on the records like he wouldn't tell his name. He's like, man, well, you know, he did what he did. I don't know that dude, but I ain't about to do all that. He said, I'm, I'm talking about my situation because it's necessary for me to beat these cats. And I'm just, you know, explaining them like what it is. But I'm not still doing all that. So the dude left the story alone. So now Ocean has successfully got himself out of prison. Nigga, he has landed a Netflix uh, exclusive uh, docu series deal that's going to be airing in 2022. There's allegedly uh, potentials of millions, tens of millions of dollars in damages. Um, 
I just think this is the craziest story ever, bro. And it's not a new thing. People in Vegas have heard about this and kind of somewhat even forgotten about it to an extent, maybe. But it's just nuts, dog. Like, um, hey, man, the good old American justice system. Only good for you if you're fucking white. Or got money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because. Yeah, if you got money to fight your case, you could You got win. money to fight your case. Because the thing about Ocean, Ocean has some bread kind of like so. I know that helped with that attorney and the way she was do, digging up stuff and getting information. Like, I know that, like, that cost. You know what I'm saying? But every time you see, uh, you know, one of the brothers, like, beat those type of cases, you can kind of look back and go, oh, he had that bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't had that money, boy, you'd have been, they'd have got you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, when you got money, you get to fight your case from the outside or get your affairs in order if you know you're finna go down. And I don't like defending criminals for the most part, but I swear, dog, like... It's easy to he's fight a your hero. case on the outside. He's though. a hero, bro. Mm-hmm. Ocean, when when this is all done with Ocean, they're gonna, be, they're gonna have to deal with us a little different here. I'm not saying it's gonna change the world, but it's gonna change a lot of how they put together some of these cases, bro. Especially in that pimping and pandering world, which is not a world that I really idolize, condone, nor fully respect. You know what I mean? And I guess that, um, are you all right, bro? I'm trying to break and I don't want to break in the mic. Oh, okay, my bad, I didn't mean to put you on blast. I just wanted to make sure we don't need to get up out of here, bro. Like, hey man, you good? But no, so it, it's just, the Ocean Fleming story, man. Uh, you always tell me it's the, a listening experience. No, right. No, I, I feel you. I appreciate that. I get, I get what you're saying. Anymore, the, the, it's a, the boss of the uh, boss of the city. Um, I'm looking forward for the documentary. Nah, I should. Hey, man, Ocean, right. if you ever see this, man, holla at your boy, man. We'd love to get your story up here, Hell man. Come yeah. on here, chop it up. We, hey, you know what I'm saying? Somebody tag Vegas. my guy in the com- you know, comments, here. man. You could even always come talking shit. to the show. You know what I'm saying? We do whatever, you man. Can come. We, no, no, no. We come to you, player. We come to you. Oh yeah, no, no, this is the cherry on top. I almost fucking forgot. Big O's towing right here in Vegas. Shout out, because my man got out now and is basically on his way to being a millionaire. Because first thing he did, he said, "Yo, when I got out, I knew I had to change my life and and do some shit different." He said, and I, and I got a little bit more enlightened when I was in there sitting down fighting my case. He said, "Man, I went and got my first job. You know what I'm saying? As a tow truck driver, learned the game, excelled there." took all the game, mastered it, and started my own company, and he making like 5K a day as we speak right now here in Vegas. Big O's towing. Shout so out yeah, to him. Ocean Fleming. You know if you're watching saying? this, somebody knows him, tag him. Big O's towing. We'll come to you. We can do the show at Big O's. Let your boy get a, a Big O's towing cool. t-shirt. We could do a show Should at Big hard. O's Towing. We'll give you the publicity on that. You know, get the, you know what I'm saying? Thing, bro. He got it, no all right, bro. I'm just like, saying. Yeah, I'm just the, saying. The, the you know man. what I'm saying? Like I said, we love how you on the show. That should be a fun episode. And and before I move on to something else, I do want to add this because there's a lot of women that love and support oh, us. But big up for you winning that case and getting the fuck out. Though. There's a lot of women that love and support us. Um, this is not a a, a cheering. Yeah, we're not, of 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 a criminal of, of criminality towards women. We're not championing but him being a pimp. Let and me all finish. That let shit. me let me get my shit off real quick. I don't want to misspeak on this one. If a woman has a right to choose in every which way. And um, according to the court documents, according to s- character witnesses, according to those that know, you know, there's different type of men that interact in this business. They're, Cause they don't criminalize Hugh Hefner and things like that as a pimp and as a person that's forcing women or coercing them um, to do things. However, some of these pimps in the city and stuff like that, they, they always get that rap. I'm, I'm just simply saying, and it's a slippery slope, Barry. That based on everything documented, he never forced nobody. That's not something that that he was. It was a rumor put out by a by a, like a journalist or some shit like that that he was putting women in dog cages, and they could never find anybody to corroborate that. And he talks about it all, all on the thing a lot. He's like, man, that really hurt me. He said because I know people look at me and be like, man, what kind of man are you? Like, you know what I mean? He was like, I wasn't doing that. There's a lot of women in Las Vegas that come here that looks for a certain type of lifestyle and, and a business to join, and some of them use men as in partnership. And, I, and, and that's the way it was described. That's the way we're reporting it. I mean, if there's any women out there that want to... Nah, actually, we're not opening that we're can. We're not doing bag. that. God bless you. God bless you. Don't do Go to the authorities, my nigga. I should have been. 
Go to the authorities. Bing, we're, not, bing, 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 we're not even doing that. Go to the authorities. God bless you. You know what I'm saying? But um, I hope you, you just want to get that out the deserve. way before we got any of the hate mail for any chicks. I know, like you know, y'all was over there just defending the pimp. Like you know what I mean? But no, hey. we're defending the the the. I'm talking about faulty police. Yeah, faulty fucking police trying to drop him, trying to right. put a man in fucking prison. And set him up on shit because they really had no way to put him into prison because they had no way to catch him other than this low down, dirty, rat ass nigga who was telling on everybody. Be careful. Like, and this is one thing, you know what? And I'm opposed to this because I said to myself while watching this, like, oh, we're going to talk about this on the pod. I'm going I'm to holler at Dre about this. And I said to myself, if I could ask this brother one question. In an interview setting, because mm-hmm. I ain't just like I said, this boy, you know what I'm saying? This nigga, that's oh, it's a hard nigga, body. I, no no disrespect, oh. No problem with my nigga. Right? <laughs> let me talk to me. <laughs> hey, man, let me holler at you, play. Right. This is no disrespect. Interview setting. What man. I would ask him is that, or what I would like try to point out is like, hey, you, you ever notice that this judicial system, because there's a couple of people that caught the same similar cases to him that don't look like Ocean mm-hmm. that got three years probation. Mm hmm. And not life. It's a guy that got literally the same charges. I'm not gonna call his name, but he got three years probation, right? And he was middle of Middle Eastern descent. So another guy that was white, he got four years, five years probation. And so what I'm saying is that okay, is what I'm saying is that like, what about? I'm just telling you, hey, black boys out there doing what you do. You, I know we're not a racist people, but hey, man, hey, it's a lot of ethnicities that when they do illegal things, they don't fuck with niggas. You and also, but be careful too, because you know these fucking good old boys and all that shit. These cops and shit love to have it in their mind like these little girls as their daughters and shit. I'm not championing pimps and panders and any of that shit, but what I'm saying is. Nigga, they catch you doing that shit. They just look at you on top of being a nigga. They looking at you like, oh, no. oh I got dogs. And that, don't, that, don't, that doesn't even have to be. Ass, that's not even a white person thing. There's black cops that take that extra personal. Let me take that. There's, there's, take the there's, race there's out of men. Men take cops. that personal. So let's say this: cops and are women, going too. to take it personal, but then add it to the racism already they might have for you on this. Call. Well, that's everything. You know yeah, what I'm hell yeah, hell yeah. And I feel what you're saying. I'm just saying that. What I would ask him though, the question is, is that, hey, bro, do you think that a person in your shoes, because in his criminal life, you could say his downfall was protecting, looking after, and uplifting Molly. Because Molly, yeah. nobody gave a fuck about nobody him fuck when about you got him. Ocean next to you and you pulling up with cats like him. Because we already know. Just because you with it Drake, you, just because you with Trace, just because you with Drake and all them niggas, like, that don't really make you, that ain't nothing. You're a celebrity, you got money, whatever. I don't know what to, But when you pulling up with Ocean, Ocean gives you validation. When, if Ocean wise, riding around these Vegas, yep. these Sin City streets, and be like, yo, that's my man. That means you're validated That means here. all the stick up kids left you alone when your ass was fooled, nigga. Yep. You owed him better than that. Because how many niggas was probably looking at him? You owed him better than that. Okay, don't you touch was this fooled. <laughs> until, no, you was fooled because it was a few niggas that ran down on him. Nigga that seen Ocean was with him and was, oh, like, was oh. like, oh, okay. The nigga looked and was like, yo, That's nah. He told his crew like, oh, I ain't know he was with. Oh, yeah. Like he's that type type of dude. And you you know because every crew probably like, what nigga fuck oh, hey bro. Hey, oh, no disrespect. This nigga don't know. Nah. Shut your ass talking about like nah, that. Bro, nigga. Like, nah, it wasn't. It was like in the city, like you it wasn't knew. like that. Yeah, Fam, I knew. have never heard nobody be Ever like, man, I've never heard nobody say nothing crazy about that nigga, like, or just, just some much shit, like, like, man, that nigga's a, you don't hear that. Yeah, you don't. And I know why, cause niggas, hey, bro, when niggas is really about that, don't nobody talk about them. Nope. Don't nobody be walking around just talking shit to these niggas, like, it, that's why, uh, nigga. Alpo just did a fucking red carpet, fam. Right. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and some de- and a designer, and designer nigga, dapper Dan. Mother, come on, nigga, <laughs> stop it! Oh, I had to. Ooh, talking about dapper Dan, we gonna get on just real quick. We'll go into your next subject. This gonna oh, piss good. you off as a New Yorker, a native New Yorker. What? I'm talking to na- two native New Yorkers that said they did not know who dapper Dan was. How old are they? In their twenties. That makes sense, bro. Well, that He's still sense. relevant though. To. to is it to us? Is that one of them things that I'm tripping on that? I'm going to be honest with you. If I call Darian's fly, uh-huh. so it's a chance he might know. 
Because he'd be in a Louis and Gucci store and shit no, shopping. I'm about no, I'm just saying. No, hold on. Though, no, hold on. Right? I'm just saying. Like, oh, that, I mean, yeah, Darian I guess that's an element, too. That's an element, too. I'm not but, talking about a Darian who got swag and shit. No, but. but, but I know him. All right, no, okay. I get what you're saying. Up in New York. I get what you're saying. How about um, you grow up in New York to know who Dapper Well, Because you got to look at this, though. They took him from the history for a long time. No, but I get it. But these niggas all talk about Alpo. They all talk about them drug dealers from back then. I'm like, nigga, I, I asked him, I was like, you know about them, right? I'm like, you remember all them fly ass Gucci and Louis right. Fitz you never but, found but for that's nobody? One of those things that if you Unless the nigga that made him, he's like, oh. But look, until now, until they did the documentary, we, a lot of people wouldn't know. You, you had right? to be from that, 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 that era of culture. You had to, like, know, you had to be that in tune to the culture. But fam, I, I feel fam, like fam there's cats that love JD's music. I feel like if and you don't know, know who Jay Dilla is. I feel like if you know Alpo and all that culture, though, you got to know Dapper Dan now because he was a big part. No. I mean, because, he wasn't in it like that, but he was no, like but the you gotta look at it. But it. you got to look at it from a native New Yorker standpoint, dog. You think every nigga in New York know who Alpo is? Nah, that's true. You know what I mean? People. Hey, you know what See, I give up I to New York? To people from other cities, I don't think they realize. Even from my friends from L.A. and shit, I don't think they realize how California is the biggest, the most popular, popular state, right? It's a big ass state. Big ass state. It's huge. There's no. That shit s- takes up damn near fam. the whole PC. You could take Pacific every major Coast, city. You could take every major city in fucking California, put it together, and it's no New York. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. <laughs> so when you be like, nigga, like, who? Like, what? <laughs> Everybody in there. Nigga, you yeah, know what I mean? Fucking you know what I mean? Niggas in New York that don't listen to hip hop? That's real. That's real. Because when you outside of New York, you feel like, oh, that's where hip hop was created. There, everybody live it. You, you feel like the mayor is rapping, nigga. That's like, real, yeah. But it's not, all, it's not really like that. And New York is the most foreign place. It's it's a world. It's a, 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 a microcosm of the world. Any nationality can move to New York and feel at home in a certain neighborhood. That's real. You know what I do love New York for though. You, the, I feel you. You the reason that we had that big ass push of uh, polo jeans and shit. Because whoever stole that big ass shipment in New oh, York. Oh yeah, remember that shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny, dog. They stole a big ass shipment yeah. and flooded the streets with well, polo. That's that, new year, that's that that's that new Yiddy swag, that though. Booster. Because yeah, because <laughs> hey, dog. I wish like, we had imagine them out here, like there's cities that have fences. Yeah, fam, a fence. If you can find a dope fence, nigga, that just gonna come. Hey, bro, I need a roly. I got about eight hundred. Give me that. I'll be. I'll give. I'll have for you tonight. I got a little something. Ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be no buzz down or nothing. I got but you a little something. Be a plain I have it for you tonight, and it it won't tick. It'll be that legit. It's gonna shit be a rolly with, with boxing hey, papers. It might it might have came off somebody's body. Yep. It might it might be a used and abused rolly. Go get that polished up, nigga. Yep. There, there you go. Niggas that's, don't. That's, that's, what, you know that's what, what West Coast niggas really don't know about is fencers and boosters. Well, Some no. do. L A. The Bay. L A. L A. And the Bay. The L A. And the Bay. Because I'm gonna tell you a story. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. If you're not in the Bay Area, if you're not in the Los Angeles area, this you're not in a metropolitan enough area to experience this. In those parts, and right? let me tell you, so, like Reno cats don't know boosters. Let me tell my Reno cats about these boosters. No, that we talk. Let me get my uh, get your shit off. Yeah. In Oakland, shout out to my boy Justin Riley, man, and uh, you know, uh, God bless the soul of his grandfather. His grandfather had passed, and I had grown kind of close to his grandparents, so his grandmother invited me down to Oakland to come down there with him for the funeral. Bro, I'm a, I'm a shorty, man. I I, I got still got the pants leg up. I'm still rocking my pants leg up with Tim's and shit. I'm in Oakland, and I remember this nigga's auntie was like. Pac and Big still alive, nigga. Yeah. And was like, you know where you at? You're not. You're not <laughs> she, she stopped me. She's like, do you know where you at? And the whole time, because because so I'm a obli- I'm being oblivious. Because mm-hmm. dog, New York was never really like that. No, you guys. So, were, it so, wasn't a beef to you. And, it was just and like, so like even, so when I'm talking to my cousin, anybody, nobody was ever like, oh nigga, fuck East Coast, fuck nigga. West like, Coast. It nigga. wasn't like that. They're on that didn't side. Go there. Like, New York, nigga. Fuck, energy. fuck all you niggas over here. From that energy, my mom has never nigga been like, oh nigga, this is some West Coast. Like like you know so. So it just was like, nigga, I never really, and I lived on the West Coast, right? <laughs> so it was just like, whatever, this nigga, right? I'm not thinking, I'm not really tired. tripping. But I remember she looked at me and was like, "Do you know where you at?" And I remember his dad rolled for me and was just like, "He know where you at? He with me." Like, cause the whole time I'm annoying these niggas. I'm like, yo, this this kind of look like a New York. I'm you know sorry I mean? if we're somewhere the, else. We're no, always gonna compare it to no, how, how we bet. like relate to it. Like I could relate to this spot. This remind me of such and such street. My motherfucking where I came from. Fam, I get on the little on the Bart. You know what I mean? And uh, I think I like told my friend or something because he was kind of misconfused. I was like, Nah, man, we we going this way. And he was just like, Oh yeah, man, I forgot. You know, like this ain't new to you. Like nah, in that way. And I was like, ways, I, I was like light lightweight because. 
you know, it's been a while, but I was just like, I can remember this. Yeah, like, you know what I'm like saying? Bike, and, so, and so he said, um, he's like, hey, man, that's cool. So he was cool. He was chopping up with me and shit like that. I think he just liked my energy and personality. We're on the bark going to like the movie or something. I don't remember. And this dude get on the bark. Got and he, everything you need. And he chilling, right? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an observant person, bro. So I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm chilling. And he... He, he slide over to, to Pops, say something to him. Pops was like, look at him, like, kind of ignore him, say something to him again. Pop, I see, I noticed Pop, now like, you know, yeah, he, snap his he, head yeah, down. He caught his and ear. He, yeah, he got a napkin full of stones. Yep, caught his ear. Full of stones. He had just, he's like, and he was telling him, he's like, yeah, man, I just got off my shift, man. He's like, I got some watches too. And he's like, no, nah, I don't want that. Pops was into, into them stones. Yeah, but Pops was a true value. Bay Area, Oakland dude, old school player. So what Pops did was like, yeah, man, he's like, man, I would. Because dude tried to hit him. Like, yeah, man, I'll give you these for this. And he's like, well, how I know it's this? He's like, man, he's like, well, the jewelry store closed, man. He's like, you know, I'm telling you, I just left the mall right here. He was like, nah, all the jewelry stores ain't closed. Get on the stand on the train, man. Woo -woo. Took him to a whole nother little spot where he already knew, like, man, what's up? These real nigga detoured our whole shit. And I remember thinking, like, oh, yeah, this is. This is that. This is that shit. This is that right mm -hmm. there. Nigga. Like, you don't see, this don't happen everywhere. Yep, this is that deal that he couldn't walk away from, had to verify, because, nigga, I need that right now, nigga. It's a city of survivalists. Yep. When you're in Detroit, when you're in Chicago, you when you're in Philadelphia, you're in places like New York City, Los Angeles, the Bay Area, like, shit, Miami. Las Vegas is becoming that. Miami, in a, in a way, is a little something like places that. Yeah, Texas right? Gotta be. It's like that. Um, but the thing what I'm talking about, like you know, Houston, Dallas, yeah, Port, Houston, Dallas, be. right? You have so many dimensions and like levels to your city. Yep. You know what I mean? There's a real underworld to it. Yep. Man, I took my boy Chrome, man. We went and played the numbers. You know what I'm saying? And the first thing I had to like grab him because I just knew it. He's from Vegas. When he realized that we went behind a wall in a bodega, and he, oh my God, I'm in a real bodega. He's thinking about half base. This nigga tried to take his phone out and go lie. Like, I had to stop him. And you should have seen how they looked at us in there. Like, yo. You got me like looking if, brand new. And this if, is my If my auntie right hadn't now. already brought me to the store and was like, it's my nephew. Like, like, Niggas might have got whooped. Bro, we might not have made it out if, that nigga room. Niggas might have got machete, we nigga. We might not have been out that room. Niggas might have. You might have saw machetes. Like, shik, shik, shik. Like, ooh, hey, whoa. Yeah, because he was like, man, I want to play the number. Ooh. So my auntie, oh, yeah, go, 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 go to the store. You know, he's impatient. He went over there and came back with some scratch offs. They gave that nigga the real legitimate shit because he didn't know how to act, and they don't know him. Yeah, you ain't you don't know how to ask Aki for the joint. So we went back, man, and next thing you know, we was in there playing them, playing them. them but he became them, a tourist. Playing them in. He he forgot what what that that you got, motherfuckers go away. Ot, they gotta remember. Don't become a tourist. Remember, well, remember, you're out your OT, but you got, still got to remember, nigga, your street codes do kind of regulate over here, nigga. Well, that's There's why still when I go out of town, of all, we all. That's why when I go OT, I don't go to the hood, right? Shorty, unless I'm, unless Shorty, my family look, or whoever I'm visiting man, is uh, there. Up, man, Lil Yonder just came out here from out there and was like, "Yeah, that's crazy." Like, and she was talking shit, like, "Oh man, see, I try, I'm in, I'm in your neighbor, I'm riding with you, like." Cause she had an attitude, like trying to get me and my brother in the car, like, oh, I'll just take y'all, let's go over here. Nah, no, I'm just hey, going over out, there. Though. You go get it. Yep, it's your city. We'll be right here. Yep. And like, it was an offense, and then I, you know, like, oh, she finally went ahead and did it, but it was with a lot of attitude. But then, like, I was explaining that to her, like. You know, you know how cats move. I'm in, in First certain First of all, you, you he and ain't Darren, from here. Right, like, you and man, Darian are fucking on, lit, bro. bro. Come on, we ain't out here. We ain't doing that. They can probably look at you and Darian and show that your niggas ain't broke ass right, niggas. Right, bro, I'm, I'm just not, especially when you out of town. You OT. Well, most people, when they out OT, look lit. Yeah. You ain't going out of town bummy. Right. You don't go out of town with a little check saved up, a little money. Shit, unless you go to you, Detroit, on, nigga. You buying extra shit. Like, you I know what I'm saying? off the plane to Detroit. You buying extra well, it's certain levels to it. <laughs> I'm just saying it's levels to it. Like, trust me, if me and D go to the brook, I'm all, like all that this. bust down, nigga, and all that stay here. I'm looking like this. What do you mean? Straight all that like bust, this. that's staying Sweat here. Sweatfits and Tim's, nigga. Yeah, I'm not doing nothing for what? <laughs> I, I go shopping uh, out yeah. there. Yep, but and I'm nigga, not wearing none of the shit I shop for, too. Bro, I'll I'm wear not, it here. Bro, I'm not doing none of that. Like, <laughs> it's just different elements that you got to watch. I'll for. go buy some brand new Tim's and bust them out out there. 
It ain't gonna be no Balenci's or no motherfucking. Nah, you ain't doing none of that. Unless we in Manhattan. Well, the thing is, you gotta be strong. Yeah, right. So you gotta know where to go. But it's the thing, though. Say, you know, you jump on a, that, that that one train and you go over to Manhattan. <laughs> you gotta go back to the one train and no, go back I mean, to Brooklyn. If I'm staying in Manhattan. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying if I gotta go back thing, to Brooklyn. This is the thing, though. Harlem is in Manhattan. So Harlem is in Manhattan. That's their city. So no matter if you're in the Harlem section, yeah. Harlem dudes is in Manhattan. Uh -huh. See, Harlem dudes is fly. So they might be more or less. It, you know, Brooklyn is, is known for like the and, and you know for the Jacks. That's Brooklyn real. and Queens is gonna stick you up. Harlem the Bronx, dudes are fly. Harlem dudes are like fly. Everybody yeah. fly. So it, you might camera, you gonna fit in. You gonna fit in there. Yeah. You go fly in Harlem, Manhattan. Yeah. And people are gonna expect you to be walking down and the street. They gonna look at you fly. and they gonna respect what you got on. Like, oh, I see you got the little ball mains you know with the blend. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You gonna get props in Harlem. Cause well, niggas gonna might compare the outfits. You know what I'm saying? Or I mean, niggas. That's true. If you're in the good part, that's, of Manhattan, no, I'm saying, not if you're no, in Harlem, true. Harlem. That's true. Like in terms of if you're known and niggas know you, but New York is not one of those. Places. No, no, no. I mean, if they see so many, you no, at saying. the store, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, you yeah, can have those running. You gonna have those running run, anywhere. You gonna have those running. Yeah. You gonna have those with good people. Yeah. Right. But it's a stick to yourself. Pretty much. Type yeah. place. Yeah. So it's not necessarily like. Nigga might look at your shit and be like, that nigga's fly as hell. And not and tell his man. You, right. And not even tell you. But that's like, why niggas on okay. the West Coast don't understand when niggas from the East Coast come, why they're so standoffish when nigga be like, oh, your shit's tight. Usually what comes next is nigga run that. Well, no, it's, I know niggas in, 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 from the West Coast that are have that same stance. Because, dog, these same, that's what I'm trying to tell people. Run that, these like elements that. are the same everywhere. But the culture is just different. Right. So there's a lot more places in Los Angeles that you can wear a Rolex or some you real, diamonds you real. Yep. and not really be under the scope of like, oh, shit, nigga, the Jack Boys is out. Because in Detroit, but if there's you go, not a lot of places. That's what I'm saying. If you're in, you can go if you're in Detroit, at, nigga. nigga, you're in Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> even downtown where the casino right? is at, nigga. You, if you're in a place like Detroit, you're in Detroit. Like, but even in Chicago, there's yeah, certain places. That's why it was a big deal. Chicago, Where FBG good. Duck got murdered at is a multi-million dollar in neighborhood. Yeah, that's like and dying on Rodeo in yeah, LA. yeah, that's exactly it what it's like. To happen. And so that's the thing. That's an anomaly. Like, yeah, that's, that's why he was there. Yep, yeah, because he didn't expect. That's why that was the only right. place they can catch him. It's like, man, we got to just do this shit out here. Yeah, and like, so the place we go, he ain't, he ain't, he know where not to go. That's why they had to catch Mo Three on the freeway, bro. Because you know where not to go in your city in certain places. Me, I'm just, I'm just a. Man, the the, the the earth the, the earth is my turf type person. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm a people person. But at the same time, hey, bro, I'm not one of these dudes that's infatuated with the hood. No. So I know cats that get in a new city and they ain't, they the they is. haven't seen the city if they ain't been in the hood. They like, yo, bro, they take me to the hood. I'm trying to. The only time this is funny. Two quick stories, bro. D.C. and East St. Louis. Me and my little brother at the Million Man March. Anniversary. We in DC. We go to this shit called Chocolate City. We go to DC man strip club. Beautiful women right. having a ball. We both actually. I'm old enough now to be in a strip club. This nigga like 16. His ID say he 32. <laughs> Looks nothing like the nigga, right? Yeah, you know, but we yeah, out. Yeah, but here. usually when you're OT, they we don't out even here. give well, a no, fuck. It's they like nigga, they, they, right. they, well, the funny thing is, they didn't let us in because uh, of this nigga's ID, but. <laughs> We was on some Vegas shit, nigga, like on some like oh, Nevada shit. Lot, no, we're getting in. What do you mean? <laughs> no is not the answer, nigga. What do you mean? What you What's it going to cost? What, exactly. What you and want? so like it's a Wednesday night at a juke like some hood shit, nigga, that's like by our hotel, nigga. It ain't we ain't supposed to be. So they looking like, nigga, why are y'all do you know where you are? First off, like and I remember the nigga kept calling me New York. Right? You can tell, yeah. Cause he asked me, he's like, You from New York? I was like, originally, man, but I'm out here from Reno. He's like, damn, nigga, you in Reno? So we started talking about that, and that's what broke the ice. Mm -hmm. Big, mean-ass nigga at the door. Looked at my brother, like, man, get that shit out that of shit here. That shit the man. fuck out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but then he said, because he, he was like, y'all loud. But, dog, I'm going to be honest with you. This is like probably my first time back east in a minute, and I didn't know what loud meant. This is before rappers were saying this shit. It's before it had made it to the West Coast. Like, So I was just like, loud, nigga, we ain't loud, nigga. <laughs> said, now you're loud. No, fam, I'm like really, because I'm drunk and I'm like, man, let my little brother in. They're like, we're trying to kick it. Because I had a shorty that I met that was like, I'm going to be working here. So I'm like, now you blocking. No, I'm trying to get in here. I'm trying man. to get in here, fam. What are you talking about? And I remember he was just like, man, y'all niggas is loud. Boy, where y'all, y'all wild. 
And I was like, what you talking? Like, I'm talking to you peacefully as shit. And when I said that, he started laughing. And he was like, nah, man, I could smell it on you. <laughs> now, we're on some West Coast shit. Nigga, I got about a half ounce of weed in my pocket right here, nigga. Like, thinking these Super niggas. Super OT. Thinking that these niggas is just going to let me in the club. They like, nigga. We can't let you, you in like what that. What are you doing? We don't smell like Bro, that out is, here. This is way before weed is legal. Anywhere. Like it's, and, and it's, we, you're in weed D.C., is still, they don't weed, get weed, weed like that weed, there. Weed, well, they do, but it's a whole different culture. Right. Weed is like coke and heroin yeah. and everything else. Nigga, you do that shit, nigga, where it's done at and nowhere in between. <laughs> you ain't supposed to smell like it in between. <laughs> You ain't, you know what I'm saying? Basically telling you like you niggas trying to go to jail tonight. You gonna have us all in jail tonight. That's how they looking at like you niggas is hot boy. Like fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? He but, said fuck the ID. But this is what it is. It wasn't that big of a club, and Shorty seen me, mm-hmm. and because she seen me through the window type shit, nigga. Because I'm like, man, fuck this nigga. I'm smoking. I'm smoking outside they shit. Like nigga, where we gonna yeah, go? Extra West Coast. Not even trying to be, right? <laughs> Just on my West Coast shit, right? I'm like nigga. We we both is we like man where we gonna go? It's only like two in the morning. Like we out here, but not really. It's two in the morning, and it's DC, DC, so it's lit. And and if you and then honestly, bro, that was my first time to DC. Mm-hmm. Probably you know, and that's like I was there as a kid or something like. But that was my first time like to DC, and I'm gonna and I'm like damn, and I visually, nigga, it's lit. Right, it's people, but it's not lit. It's not. Everybody on their underground shit. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you in underground hours. And underground hours in Las Vegas is broad motherfucking daylight. Right. <laughs> so in underground arm and much as niggas go hard on the no, underground armors in Reno, un- underground hours in Reno is daylight. broad daylight. Mm-hmm. Nigga, what you mean? Niggas is doing everything they do at three, four in the morning at noon. Right. <laughs> what are you talking about, nigga? We got a fucking beer crawl tonight. We getting on. Like, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, we we all out of body. Oh, uh, you out of pocket. She come to the thing. She like, what, what you doing? I'm like, man, these niggas tripping. My brother can't get in. We'll, we'll. And he just came. He's like, man, come on, New York. Because at this point in time, he's just trying to get us out from in front uh, of his yeah, shit. You cause it, yeah, you man, put that him, shit out and just come in the club, you nigga. Bring him the and then he was like, nigga, buy, you got to buy three drinks, nigga. So I'm like, oh, that's shit. It, man. But, you know, that's that East Coast shit, like, nigga, minimums and all that shit. I'm like, fuck, man, like. All right, fuck really it. not East Coast. That's like that big city shit. Big like, okay, whatever. Shit, like, yeah. all right, bet, whatever. And so I'm calculating. I'm like, man, these niggas better not try to hit me in here, right? They better not hit us. Nigga. Hit y'all. I'm drinks is three motherfucking dollars. Oh, nigga said three drinks. Goddamn big ass <laughs> cup. Of it. I'm like, man, this, you did, because I was in there loud. He was like, New York, man, calm down. I was like, man, you don't want, y'all don't tell the bartender. Way you, the way you sound, make this shit sound like, Dog, you said three drink minimum, like, nigga. Yeah, because that's what they own. But I'm like, nigga. Three drink minimum in Vegas is fucking fifteen dollars a drink. This is when he started fucking with me, cause I'm like now, no, you know what, fam? I take that back. We had smoked our last pack of weed coming in that bitch. That's why we was loud. We have some West Coast. Okay. Nigga, I, I took some when we on the plane. Ah, right? We, eh. so that's what it was. That's why we was out, cause we was like, bro, we got we out here for like six more days, nigga. We out here for marches and all type of shit. I need some trees, nigga. Like, we need some trees, we dog. Need mine, then. Me and my little brother's on a... That's what we was on, yeah. dog. We was on a tree mission. That's what I was getting to. Nigga. So that's what it was. That's why he was like, y'all loud. And I was like... And then I smoked the rest of it. And then it was like, nigga, a little doobie. He was like, man, finish that, man. Just come on in. And that's what it was. So we came in. I remember this nigga was spraying us when we walked in and everything. Spraying us. He was being hella extra at first. I'm like, I was reading it wrong. I'm like, this nigga being kind of extra, bro. Like. Nigga, you, you work at the door. But, but the nigga big and, and was with it. You could tell I wasn't disrespecting the nigga at all, nigga. Yeah. And it's a whole bunch of looking killer ass niggas. He said, nigga, there, right? and he probably know the, all these you they niggas all his not people. getting out. Nigga, like, nigga, you're not so, getting nigga, out. naturally, when we walk in, everybody look at us. Yeah. <laughs> right? We're like, shit. I'm like, damn, dude, nigga, do we even want to be here? We tripping. And I'm still stupid. I'm like, nigga, one, me, one of these niggas in here got some tree. And I'm going to buy it from him. That West Coast shit. <laughs> like, so I'm like, nigga, because you know, on the West Coast, nigga, niggas, don't, niggas won't kill you over no weed. Not at all. It's not that big. It's, it's a it little. Better, it got to be 100 pounds, mm-hmm. nigga. Like, niggas won't kill you over no tree out here. On the way, like, not like that. that that's not a, a common occurrence. Boy, niggas is dropping on the other side of the country for an ounce of weed. That's some work. When maybe it's deciding now because weed laws are changing everywhere and it's being more successful. Once the shit becomes recreational, now you're getting bombed in your city. All right. 
Same companies that's selling us bombs just going to open up there and have they bomb, right? So it's, it cuts all that bullshit out in a lot of ways. We ain't have no say, so I know it hurts, but it's true. We both was on that shit. Oh, nigga, fuck this dispensary shit. Boy, we been blowing trees. Show sure was. What, nigga? We did, wasn't we? Show sure was. We some bougie-ass dispensary niggas now. Show sure is. You can't even sell me no shit in a plastic bag. I can't you even can't see the terps, nigga. The only nigga right, I'll get, get terps is in here. The only nigga I get street tree from is Dove, <laughs> nigga. Wait, hold on. When was this grown? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, Dove can tell me that, except but, for the terp count. Right. He can tell me when it was grown, where he got it, who he get it from, when it, all the shit. So fam. But I'm not, none of the so rest peak, of niggas, nigga. I'm not buying that shit. So now we in there, nigga. We've been in there about two hours, dances and shit. Everything cheap. And we, we own it. We're like, damn, I forgot. Like, shit cheaper out here. Ain't no $25, $35, $45 dances. Ain't no nigga 250 nigga to be in there for 30 minutes. Ain't none of that out there, nigga. Ain't niggas. no 15 And $20 everything dollars. is negotiable. So the bitch think you're cute, nigga. She's really just like, nigga, just give me $30, nigga. We'll just kick it over here. And she dancing because she's dancing. She's a dancer. Yeah. She's drinking. Like, everything's cheap, nigga. Like, you buying her drinks and shit. She's like, oh, y'all so sweet. Like, you know how it is on the other side of the country. Like, people are more, like, personable. Mm -hmm. So, we having a ball, nigga. But now it's little bro is like, nigga, I got to smoke, bro. Like, where the trees at? And this is when he was, and I ain't going, you know, I don't put his business out there. This is when he was on his thing. He on his thing, you know. Oh, yeah. That time. Yeah. And I remember the thing is, this nigga's in there looking like Mac Dre. Now, we both in there P-coded up and shit, but I remember, he got Tim's and shit, but this nigga, is, at this time, he's a fucking diehard Mac Dre fan. This nigga got on the biggest stunner shades ever. <laughs> Hold on, fam. With no, like, lime green nigga with no lenses. Oh, he in there, like, on his bay shit. Like, you feel me? Like, this nigga look like he right out the bay. So, I'm like, damn, bro, like... You we look so OT right now. You looking so like y'all looking like a you. To, hey, uh, you looking like a lick. We, you looking like a whole lick. And that's how I'm starting. So now look, I'm now glad you said that. To click to you, My like, senses are start because now I'm, I'm been drinking. Hand. I've been drinking hand and shit. Yeah. And like you know, I'm, now I'm starting. To, I'm not smoke. I'm, I ain't smoked. It's been a couple of hours, and now I'm in there just uncomfortable, nigga. Looking <laughs> like like damn, nigga. We walked in here with these niggas. I asked Shorty. I was like, when them <laughs> niggas come in here? She's like, they was in here before y'all. They been in here. What? I was like, damn. And but by this time I done moved around and shit. So like niggas is cool. Like all right, y'all. Like when niggas was leaving, one thing they like calm me down is niggas leaving and niggas not just you know how niggas be like niggas like all right, y'all. We out, man. Like yeah. it's like okay, love, man. So then I, in my head I'm like, bro, these niggas waiting to stick us up. Soon we leave, we getting stuck up. So then I'm like, my little bro, he only 16. So at this time he like, nigga, I'm tired. Like he coming down, nigga. I'm like. All right, well, well, it's the wrong time for you to right, tie. We gonna get some tree, nigga. Like we gonna get some. We gonna get our P's and Q's. We gonna get some tree, right? So, I go ahead and uh, ask the question, nigga. I'm, I've been now. Now I'm on my nigga, okay, like nigga. I'm on everybody. I've been asking all night, but now I'm like, hey, bro, what's up, man? I'm out of town, nigga. I need them. I need that tree, bro. I need that pack, man. Call your man. What's up, man? Like I know, I know somebody got it. Who? I'm going off, going off to the point. Where I'm annoying niggas oh, like ODN, no. and finally, nigga, the same nigga I've been asking for tree all night. <laughs> was like man that nigga stood up like son you wild you's a wild nigga <laughs> both of y'all niggas is wild yeah. <laughs> he, like, he goes like this he's like nigga your little man's is over there asleep nigga <laughs> that nigga pulls out the biggest fucking bag of bomb nigga that I'm like nigga you fucking I'm asshole. like and I looked at him I'm like I'm wild nigga you in the nightclub nigga with the whole pack nigga and he started laughing he was like nah I'm good in here B I'm good in here Bet this nigga, sell us some bomb. Every beautiful night after that, every get some bomb. We tell him, we go back to the room. Not a not a jacker in sight, like Cube said, nigga. <laughs> like we we stop and get some motherfucking Chinese food, nigga. All that, nigga. Like yeah, universe is on East your Coast side shit. that yeah. night, nigga. And I didn't met the plug. No, you know what it is? Hold on, I done, yo, East Coast was on your side. Hold on, night. right? I didn't met the plug, right? That my little brother said that too. The East Coast I met was the on plug. your side that night. Guess what the plug do? He's like, oh, y'all going to the Million Man Mall? Ah, I'm going to be there tomorrow selling shirts. Bet. I don't call this nigga, right? We got, our, we got what I want from you, nigga. You ain't trying to be your friend, nigga. I don't know you, right? Everything love, though, right? Mm -hmm. Guess who we see, nigga, within 30 minutes, nigga, of getting to the Million Man March, nigga. That nigga with his shirt. Selling shirts. My, my godmother see that shit. Oh, I want one of those. We damn near, we buy one of like, we buy like two or three of each shirt this nigga got. He got some cold ass tees, Right? They East Coast shit, nigga. They printing up them oh, yeah. shit. Dope ass tees, right? Hella like pro black shit. Like, so I'm, I'm like, I'm taking these back to the note. Nigga, I got this, nigga. Ah, ah, ah. 
we excited. Nigga, we got shirts. And that nigga was like, hey. No, his boy was like, yo, tell your man. Cause nigga, I was like, I got some trees, nigga. I wanna go around the corner and burn before we go over. He's like, bet. So nigga, we went over there. They sold out all their shirts and shit, nigga. We boom. And I was like, bro, my little brother was like, how much y'all make doing that? Cause we're on some West Coast bougie shit right now. I'm kind of looking at them niggas like, y'all out here selling shirts? And I had to check myself. Not realizing. Because I'm a native New Yorker. I should made. never utter that in my mind. Nope. Because, you know, me motherfuckers, we done see just sitting Fam, selling shit. The nigga was like, oh, man, yeah, you know, we was going to be out here. So we might as well say, you know, get a little lick, nigga. He was like, because niggas like, I got to sell these next. This nigga had a bundle. He was like, I stopped by my man's. He had a bundle of fucking incense. Because he was just doing the math. Like, oh, I'm going to the Million Man March. Niggas, niggas going to want some incense, t-shirts bro. and some incense. And, dog, this nigga had made like four grand. Like just with us like while hanging out with us, like thirty minutes, bro. Like probably an hour, hours. like hour and a half, That's nigga. A lick. So like, cause nigga, he didn't have to say nothing. Niggas just walking up. Let me see your shirts. How much are they, Pat? Yeah, <laughs> nigga. People want all over the country. Black people from all over the cu- all over well, the country, that's nigga. Memorabilia it's the Million, of the Man, Million March. Man March reunion, and all the shirts was kind of themed in that way. Yeah. So it just was perk. So I'm calcul. You know, I'm a calcul. I always watch people. I'm like, damn, I need to add that to my shit, nigga. What am I doing? Right, I'm slipping, but this is the thing: it's the infrastructure. He didn't have to have a printing pr- print press, nothing. That nigga stopped by Poppy, mm. paid him nigga forty dollars, nigga got five hundred shirts, yeah. went up the block, nigga to what's your name, nigga was like, yo, I want this image, this image, this image, nigga, do me these ones, these ones, these ones, nigga. He prints up all the shirts, nigga. He went and got a fucking sandwich, nigga. Came back, got his box, paid that nigga one hundred and fifty dollars, and, and nigga went and made thousands. four grand. Hard body. So he was looking at it like, nigga, niggas got jobs, nigga, with all this. Now, guess this, though. This the kicker. Son of rapper. Oh, shit. And I wish I, like, didn't lose all my, some of my shit, like, over the years, because I used to have a little CD that he, he was, that he gave me. The nigga's nice. And he was buzzing in D.C. So peep this. He tell us, like, yo, man. His man was like, yo, tell your man. He was like, oh, nigga, man, I forgot. I'm going to have y'all come on my VIP if y'all down. My godmom was like, I mean, shit, I'm tired. Y'all niggas go do what y'all do. I'm going back to, we going back to the room. I'm staying there. So we walking all over the place, mm-hmm. right? So she like, nigga, fuck that. I'll do whatever y'all do. So we like, all right, bet. He's like, man, I'll come scoop, niggas, nothing. They come pick us up. The niggas in like a fly, a fly Audi. I'm like, damn, these niggas is moving. Like, I like how they moving, right? I'm like, these niggas out here doing it. My little brother was like, yo, these niggas out here doing it. I'm like, yeah, I know. Pick up, boom, we, we chilling, nigga. I was like, bro, what's up? Y'all trying to smoke? And they was like, damn, bro, we... They don't That's smoke crazy. like that. No, they smoke, but they was like, "Yo, you just gonna light that in the car?" They, they was the nigga was like, uh, kind of just. I see. Dog, you gotta understand, this is like probably. This is two, where all early y'all niggas, yeah, all you niggas are still so, going to jail for the shit. Might go to prison for that little bit of weed. And so that's what it was. They was looking at me like, nigga, you just be blown. Like, like right now, you just gonna smoke. So he, you know, niggas gonna be scary though. So they was like, nigga, you down? Like, nigga, all right, fire it up. And I'm telling, I'm like, no, this is what you do, nigga. Put on those, uh, open that vent, nigga. Turn that thing up, nigga. Whoop, 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 nigga. Put that defroster on, nigga. Crack these windows. It's, it's winter yeah. time, nigga. Right? Crack these windows, nigga. Bop. We smoke, nigga. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, you don't even need that. And I, I showed them the uh, little, uh, what's O-Z-O, that shit? O-Z-O. I showed them the ozone joint, nigga. We had the little, I was like, they got it here. Boom, yeah, nigga. nigga. Showed them that. About the ozium. that he was ozium, like, nigga. that nigga was like, what? They, that's crazy. They laughing and shit. We pull up to the spot. Nigga, we pull in, nigga, like we going in through the, like, valet. I'm like, nigga, it's lit. It's beautiful women everywhere. It's women getting out of Lambos. It's females. I seen two bitches get out of Lambo. Like, balling. D.C. life, nigga. Chocolate City. It's ladies night. My nigga's performing that I'm with. You know how much it costs us to get in the club? What? On VIP? What? $55. Damn. This is like 15, 16 years ago, 17 years ago. <laughs> 55 bucks. We like, nigga, what? This VIP? We pay it, though, because we ain't never seen those like this. This shit crazy. It's another club up the street that looks so lit, it looked like a movie. It's just like, swear, like 13 Lambos looking like now laters out there Damn. pulling up in the club, right? We later find out that's Dipset. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, fam, when we're getting out of the club, there were shots let off at the club up the street. I come home and find out, nigga, that was Cameron that got shot. Damn. We was there. Like, nigga, I seen Car- nigga, Carmelo Anthony bumped into a nigga. Shout out to JT the bigger figure. <laughs> JT. JT the bigger figure is a Bay Area, Bay Area legend, legend that travels the world. The, the, the earth is his turf. For real. He's so he on the East Coast. This motherfucker. He out there. 
right? He be on the East Coast. He all over the country. And he, out, oh, he's so a respected right. emperor. Right, no, no facts. <laughs> so, I'm going to be honest, fam. My little brother's in the Bay Area scene of music and shit and be back and forth. His Now, that was his girlfriend at the time, but now nigga is, you know, his, his ex-wife. Wife. Right, ex-wife. Like, nigga, like, with children and shit. Right. It's from there. So he was always running back and forth. He's more familiar. He was more familiar with the music. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of that shit late. Right. Nigga, he seen JT the bigger figure. And JT the big. well, this is what happened. He went to go get us some drinks. I was like, nigga, all right, bet. That nigga came back like, man, this shit hella expensive. He's like, I said, I wanted a cranberry and vodka. And she said, nigga, what do you want? Uh, Belvedere or something. It was something else, nigga. Like, that was hella expensive. It was like $44 or something. He was tripping. He was like, damn, this shit crazy. This club different, nigga, right? And I was like laughing like, yeah, bro, we... This we're down, there this, now. We're there. You know what I'm we're, saying? We're to where we... This is normal to us where we at. You got right. well, it's cheap. last night. It's cheaper in Nevada. Yeah, yeah, that's real. You can get all that. You can be in a club of that setting and I'll be in some day and not yeah, pay that, that much. A Belvedere and, and Cranberry going to cost It's the like cheating of the casinos. It's going to be like $8. That's because, nigga, those clubs aren't attached to a casino. Right, that's real. You feel me? That, we their, whole, no their whole state we is attached in a to night casinos, club. right. You feel me? So... I'm like, yeah, whatever. So we drinking, whatever, chilling. Now, we ain't nobody really in this motherfucking club. We with a nigga that's about to perform, but when we get in there, we realize to our standards, we like, nigga, you ain't no, you know, like, no disrespect to him. We like, nigga, you ain't that nigga in here. Um, but then, nigga, they, they playing a lot of dope shit because we're on the East Coast, nigga. No, no disrespect to the West Coast, but, like, they play a lot of shit that I grew up listening to. So, or that I like more, like, not like more, but I'm just more familiar with it. It's just different. And you don't get those sets unless you DJing or your brother and a handful of other niggas, like, at a certain location. It's not yeah, the it's spot not, yeah. where everybody wanted, it's like, not, you know what I'm saying? It's not they ever. they keep that underground where we at. But over right. there, that was on some mainstream shit. It was the shit me and you, did, did yeah, you have yeah, me DJ, where I These could play whatever. These niggas dropping Mob Deep, nigga. Right. They dropping whole b-side records nigga they drive they just playing shit nigga right and then this nigga get on it's like yeah, i got my man you gonna put on? and he rocks that joint so now we a little more lit in there nigga like females is talking and shit nigga. like you know like oh what's up like we kicking and dancing with a couple of chicks my little brother then got him a little something nigga off to the side he doing it we in there doing it he bringing me a drink and i got a little blunt in my ear and i forgot about it and JT the bigger figure seen that shit and pushed up on his dog and walked us over to his VIP section and the night went, turned into a movie after that. Right. The night turned into a movie after that. That nigga showed us so much love and it was all because he had left his weed nigga at the hotel can and I didn't feel it, like going back. Speaking of our DJ days, can I keep it a bean with you? What's that? I don't remember none of them. They're, they're Falk. Falky. Falky. We, hey, was, we, hey, that's what it's supposed to be, man. I don't remember. I probably remember walking home in the cold the one time. Nigga, I don't remember none of that shit, bro. I'll never forget that, nigga. It was cold as fuck. It was cold as a motherfucker, bro. That was some real hip-hop shit. <laughs> Can't nobody tell us we ain't come from the bottom, nigga. We was cold in crates and equipment, nigga. Just the two of us at the throwing the party. Like, nigga, lit, too. That's why I'm like, I feel like I'm to the real point. Quick. And, you know, we grown now, but. You know what I remember about that night? What? It was two. I'm not gonna name their names because we all grown. I don't know what their situation was. It was, and I dog. It was two. You know what I'm Jones says? You're like, damn man, we had a chance and it didn't work, and I always wanted to do that. Yeah. Well, this is one of them for me, and her friend was on you, and nigga, you were single at the time. I don't remember. I know, but hold on. This damn. is listen to me though. <laughs> Go ahead. Help listen me. to me. I don't remember a lot, but the reason why I remember is because nigga like. Shorty then was gonna come to the spot. Right. She's like, and she used to come and, you know, I was a different, you know, I was in my, I was doing shit then. She used to come in and do business with me. So she knew where I lived at. Right. Um. But if she was bad and I was just like, nigga, I don't wanna fuck up the business. So I just kept it player. And like, one day, nigga, it was her birthday. And I was like, yo, hey, dog, it, I know, I know hold I don't on, be doing on, wait, this. Wait, wait, I gotta cut you. Hold on.
So, nigga, <laughs> we we go and uh, the the plan is they're gonna meet us back at my at, at the little mm-hmm. downtown apartment. Mm-hmm. We and I don't remember who it was. I don't remember who it was exactly, but it was somebody that we. Somebody flaked on us on a ride situation. My car was parked in my building, and that's why we were walking, fam. Do you remember what I'm talking about now? Like somebody flaked on us, fam. And I remember, like, we 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 was. Uh, that's why I was just like, bro, let's just walk. And I remember you was like, nigga, walk. <laughs> like, and I was like, dog. And he was he was like, nigga, you better carry some of this motherfucking equipment, then. You talking about walking? And I was and I looked at the equipment. I looked at the shit, and I was like, nigga, we gotta go. <laughs> and we walked. But we were walking in a fucking blizzard. <laughs> and, it took us so long. And then we were walking. You know how you think something's not that far? <laughs> we made that mistake. And by the time we got there, <laughs> nigga's phone died. Oh, I remember. I do remember. Oh, I, nigga, by the time we got there, I'm like, okay, don't trip. We here. We're going to run upstairs. I'm going to call. Man, it was a dub. Dub. It was a dub. Never happened again. The magic never was captured. That 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 moment in time was lost. We're gonna have to mute and, one more time. Hold on. Right. Let me. Okay, hold on. In now, terms of like, chime in my now. boy, jog my memory. Look at my look, boy, man. Look, that boy, Whitney Jackson. Ness book. What up, fam? Yo, what's up, Ness? Bruh. You get what I'm talking about now? They were so bad. So now that you remember. And 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 you know what pisses me off now thinking about this? It's the rare occasions. You know, niggas do we we do get the bitches that just be on us. But this one of them nice. This little Mexican was on me. But that's just, yeah. So that Mexican drink was on you. So look, this is the thing. Oh, I so remember. <laughs> I remember that. And when we got back to this spot to my apartment, it was a dub. Like nigga, the snow. I remember all that. It was a dub. And that that just never happened. We you know, it was over. It was over, fam. Shout out to them, though. You know, shout but out I to see, them. This, so back to like what I was saying before you brought that up. This is kind of like why I feel like this is arrogant of me to say, but I feel like I'm destined to make it in this shit. Just right. by all arrogant. the shit that I've had Dog. to do to get there. Fam. <laughs> like, I mean, how many cats can say their first time rapping on stage? Shock G set them up. Yeah, push me to the nigga, front of the stage. You a young nigga chilling on stage, and the legend, may he rest in heavenly glory. And it was glory. just talked about me just rapping. It was you know what I'm saying? Talk, just talked about maybe happening. The nigga Shock G was like, you know what, Dre man, fuck that shit, nigga. Hey yo, boom, drop the beat. Nigga, my here. brother just playing come on. the outro beat. Come he on, gives me a mic. push. I look at my brother. My brother just gives me that look like. This is you now, nigga. You asked for this. Like, this is basically him saying, "Is are you? Is this you? Are you right. built for this, nigga? Right. Show me." Right. And I had written. I'd already had my first verse fucking memorized, nigga. Went on here and ripped it. Had to hit it, nigga. Bro, I brought the crowd back. You looking at a little thirteen year old right. kid, right. nigga? You're like, but bro, like all the shit that's, that's what's up. come into and, this, and that's what that's the clay. That's the what's and the I molding. Hear my dog. brothers talking about really retiring. I'm like, bro. We're not retirement age yet. Griselda just got famous, hey, dog, and two of the them thing, niggas nah, is 39 but you years gotta, old. No, it's not about that. It's just about time, dog. It's about timing and space. And No, I'm just saying when if you, I make it, I'm telling I feel you this. like I can pull him I'm out telling of that you, dog, retirement I'm telling space. You, fam, this nigga dialect, look, timing and space, right? Because that shit is like it's unretirable. Yeah. Now let like let's so that. so let he me, goes off and nigga he's flying planes and doing his thing mm-hmm. right. Let me blow up, nigga. You know how them long it's long flights on the cockpit. Mm-hmm. You think dialect can sit for six hours and not do on autopilot, nigga, yeah. <laughs> and not make a fucking beat in his head, nigga? Right. That's gonna make niggas jump out their shirt. Nah, I th- I feel it. like I feel like stop it. I feel like. I, I won't even listen to that. Certain niggas that say shit like that, I don't, I don't listen. Shout out to my nigga Chrome. Nigga, I remember when I first got out here, this nigga Chrome was telling me, he's like, yeah, man, because if this shit don't pop, you know, within a year, I'm about to retire. I looked at that nigga and laughed at him. I was like, son, you're not retiring. I'm doing. Like, nigga, you, you, I know, you got a gift. You're nice, nigga. Like, I know for this a shit fact. is your culture. It's, it's what you do. Because I'll do some, I'll just, nigga, like, I'm famous now. I need a DJ, nigga. Come on. 
This shit ain't over with. Bro, it's not even gonna be that. I need it's, producer. I'm telling. I'm, 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 I'm not even talking about. I'm not talking about coercion. Uh. I'm not talking about anybody <laughs> pulling some shit. Like I'm talking about dead ass. Just okay. Pilot, pilot shit take off. They make good money, bro. They make six. They get a lot of vacation time. Mm-hmm. So now, nigga, dialect, wifey, kids, chilling. You know, he's active father, doing his shit, bam, bam, bam. Nigga, he on the beach chilling. Two hours, pops. Kicking it. Got a bottle or something. Smoke a J. You, he's, he's, he's incapable. The gift that, make, that made him capable of doing what he does sonically, mm-hmm. it don't turn off, is what I'm saying. It don't turn off. So... What is he gonna do? Torture himself, nigga? Like, I was like, stop making beats in my head, like, nigga. How do you turn that off? I don't believe him. And the Doughty Brothers album is coming out. Like, and I, don't and I a, believe I him. I don't give a fuck at about. The same it. Time. I don't give a fuck about. I it. believe he like, man, shit. Hey, I'm hey, done. I'm tired. Like you, you somehow watch this or something. The Doughty Brothers album is gonna release, nigga, within the next like six months. Hey I'm man, no, nah, you better call that man. Don't be telling him on here and being like, yo, nigga. Me and Keem told you, like, don't try to be bringing me and your, your little bring, brother. Ain't nobody got to be brought into this, right. nigga. I'm releasing this. Right. Hey, I, what did I say? <laughs> nigga, don't tell me. Yeah. Don't tell me, nigga. You like, heard it. I've been trying to release that. <laughs> you lucky if it if the respect, was, if niggas wasn't fam, like, if I ain't been in that basement before, nigga. <laughs> if you just got a leak copy of her day. So oh, shit, I'd have been leaked you, nigga, shit. <laughs> hey, you lucky I'm not a snake, nigga. I'd be like, yo, nigga, I've been making I some beats, be nigga. <laughs> And go ham on you niggas. I, that's all I need, dog. I'm like, nigga, I'll throw that out there. I'll sell them shits, dub nigga singles. Like I'm just, nigga, oh, I made one for you, nigga. Bam, I had a shit spread all around the country, nigga. And somebody gonna pop off one of them joints. And I'm gonna just, hey man, we just gonna be in court. Lucky niggas don't think like that. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting on shit. It's just crazy. I've I've had a everybody before I've had heard. But that shit happened to my nigga like, Chrome what again. What the fuck is going on, dog? My nigga Chrome has a dog. I'm gonna play it for you. My nigga had one of my. Fa- I can honestly say this, cause I fuck with Forty Water. Mm. My nigga Chrome has a song with a, in my opinion, and I'm not from the Bay, so I can have this opinion. You know what I'm saying? Without niggas shitting on me, all my Bay artists, niggas, stop it! Don't don't come for me. I think my nigga Chrome, like he has one of the top fucking twenty. Fuck it, I'll be fair. I'll just be realistic. You got like a top twenty. Fucking forty verse. forty water. He got a forty water verse, nigga. And didn't the thing he, is, didn't forty lay it first? Well, no. Nah, the thing is, look, this is the thing. I because re- I remember Chrome was telling me he's like, yo, nigga, like, because when I was telling when they seen how much I dug it, he knows my listening taste. He's here. He'd be when we lived together before, nigga. We didn't travel this whole country together. That nigga knows from both sides. Like he knows what I like to listen to. So when I heard it, he's I was on it, and he could tell. I was, I was like, nigga. And he was like, damn, are you like, he's like, you fucking with it? I'm like, nigga, that shit hard, nigga. But now, Chrome lives in Vegas, which is Southwest. Mm-hmm. Nigga, I just got back from the Northwest, nigga, where nigga 40 is God. Right. And what I was trying to explain to him, like, yo, if these Vegas niggas don't get it, if we can put this out, and this is the thing, it's not his fault because it was some like transitionings going on with him and the, like the label situation he had, right? Like, like that he was on and like it was like the a case of the missing fucking hard drive Fuck. you know we we at the house nigga and we fucked up because we was there for a party we was there for a floyd fight the floyd pacquiao fight we in there kicking it turned up we ain't on no business shit studio niggas in there just playing music ain't nobody in there recording nothing everybody's just chilling we all just in there watching the fight and i remember the, like the nigga i ain't gonna say no names man the dude was like you know hey kind of the head of the label shit he was like yo man like Everybody needs to get their shit. And all these niggas, I can say, nigga, like, Mingo will tell you, these niggas all had, like, at the time, if they're not A-list features, they were, like, either up-and-coming mm-hmm. A-list features or, A-list, way or A-list features that had, like, maybe slid to, like, a high B-list feature. Yeah. I'm talking, like, bro, they, was, they, they got records with a couple legends. You know what I'm saying? And they lost the fucking hard drive? No, that's not what happened. This music still exists. This music is still Somebody out there. Stole it. I'm talking about the like the niche opportunity that space uh, and time again where you have a time to monetize thing. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand that. Like, what do I mean, monetize thing? Okay, well, yeah, these gentlemen, man, that's from the, uh, Well, I can 
prime example no. time and place monetized thing no right exactly <laughs> how we exactly so, so we monetize we, we literally yes. like so this nigga like the situation with this with this record is that you know as it was related, related to me from my vantage point is that it got kind of lost in the shuffle of like not i don't even to put a professional term on it mm. negotiations nigga Negotiations. For one thing, it's it like got, okay, it, it okay, got, no, it hit got it. fucked up. It got shelved unintentionally. It got shelved. The 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 the, the 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 correct term for it. It got our, it got shelved. Our, you know what I mean? It got shelved. caught up in the system. So like, you got this record that's twirling that as a kid that's not from Nevada originally, but has been indoctrinated to a coach. Look, fam. Before I finish, we're not hyphy. We're not anything about the hype, no. Before but we I finish, we're. Before I finish, we were around. nigga. Don't I know a Max record, Dre record, right, nigga? nigga we, you know what I'm saying? I know, like I know, I know, else I know. A keep the, the motherfucking sneak record. Right. I done been to them shows. Like stupid. We're, we're, I know we're, the energy. We're more. I'm Midwest, but it's still my city's more of an East Coast thing. Nigga, let get stupid. Come on, right now, nigga. But, but what I'm saying is, is that like everybody else, nigga. Like the nigga, like so the the that record is a Midwest kid. The record is 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 spiraling over there. Um, I don't have the like juice amongst. These niggas, I, I mean, not that's a bad term. I, I fuck with these niggas. Everybody, we fuck with each other. Right. But I'm the newcomer. Yeah. I'm like, yo, nigga, do you know what this record is? Upstate, but this is the problem with Nevadans. They don't care. About it's the problem know. with Nevadans, bro. Like, Reno don't care about Vegas. That's the thing. It, right. Nobody care nobody about. Care like, about it ain't that. Way. Like, the cities don't. The, the the state ain't connected. So. And it's partially because how far they are apart, the cities. But dog, the thing is, is like there, there's two totally different cultures, and it's like you're not gonna be the king of New York if they're not playing your shit in the Bronx, nigga. Buffalo, Syracuse. Like, no, no, hold on. I'm talking New York City. Talking New York City itself. Like, you're not gonna be the king of New York City. You're not gonna get on and have everybody championing you out of New York City if you're if you're from Harlem and they're not playing your shit in yeah, nigga in Queens, nigga. Yeah. Like. Eventually, you got to cross those lines and be like, oh, I'm lit out here. I know when I do shows, niggas respond well. Let me go see. But it's the lack of education of state. And one day, nigga, I was telling a nigga, I was like, bro, I'm not born here. My mother never went to school here. She has a holiday in this state. Hey, do you know what's it, might, it might not be celebrated. Right. I said, look, I'm not from here originally. But, nigga, there's not a city or town in this state that I can't go lay my head at somebody's. Do you know what's crazy is that's just a unique thing. New York is the you know what makes New York so unique. New York, you can be a big fish in a small pond in a giant ocean. You feel what I'm saying? You could be big. That's the in Harlem. That goes back to the right? like to the you, metro metropolitan right, areas. You could be big in Harlem because that applies to like all those be metropolitan the biggest areas. fish right. in the small pond of Harlem in the big ocean of New York. You know what's crazy? Well, hey, well, look, okay. You can be lit from Fallon. Yeah. And never, be the big fish in a small yeah. pond, nigga, in the big ocean of your state where Las yeah. Vegas is over there getting all this attention, nigga, and Reno's up there and Tahoe and no, all saying, these other New things. York's unique that like, way because that's all one city. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, New York City is a big place. It's, it's, yeah, that's, it's, it's not it comparable. Yeah, it is, it like, is unique. unique. But, but you know, in like, this, just to wrap this up, it's like, you got the record over there spiraling, mm -hmm. but what what the, the the issue was is on from my vantage point, if like where I couldn't help like I thought I could, and like I felt like my nigga wanted me to. Culturally, we wasn't aligned up in our thinking because it was just like, dog, you have to understand where this record is hot at. Yeah, and go. Get I it have there. I've dog. I've rarely ever heard an E forty record playing in, on in Vegas. When I like, I remember when I moved, like when I was a kid in Vegas, they didn't have like a real rap radio Vegas station. Vegas still, shit. Vegas like, is well, like Reno is called. No, like no, no, nah, I can't say that because Reno plays Bay Area. Vegas no, plays Vegas, like all the hottest top forty shit. Well, no, Vegas always has had black radio. That's real. Cool. Black radio is not gonna just black radio at that time, especially in black radio historically. You gonna have your gospel. You gonna have your jazz. Not you gonna have you. You gonna have black music. Right. So you are gonna get some hip hop in there. But what I'm saying is, is that. E40's reach. I know that he has. I know E40 has like fans in Vegas. I know niggas in Vegas fuck with E40. But what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, is for he has fans all over the, right. over the world. But what I'm saying is for Forty Waters music and his core, like the essence, 
Like we're like niggas go berserk for E40, and where and place. where if you're if where you can align yourself with, if you can align yourself with E40 in the Northwest, mm -hmm. you're gonna take off. Yep. Just like the white boy did. G Easy. G Easy aligned himself with E40, annoyed the nigga to the point where finally I listened to something. Oh, you know what? You ain't that you bad. Nice, you need man. to work on this, little man. And then I like, I like, you know what? I like your drive. And then come back around, come to the studio one day. And then he kept showing up. And then he got that 40 stamp, nigga. Yeah. Like he can go do whatever the fuck he want to do. 40 stamp and feature. Right? Um, and what, what I was understanding, because I, you know, being familiar with the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Niggas is making millions of dollars and niggas outside of the fucking Bay Area don't even know their name. Yep. So I'm seeing that and I'm like, yo, there's money behind this movement. Niggas is talented. Niggas is seasoned because niggas then did records with fucking Nipsey, the game nigga, Everybody. fucking Yin Yang, all kind of motherfucking people. Yep. Right. So I, I done seen my niggas work. I'm like, there's no way with this catalog that niggas shouldn't get a label deal yep. or shouldn't get all you niggas should get into indie deals then, nigga. Like, I know that Koch and shit like that exists and all you got, if you present these products, like, but then I also know that like, okay, well, it has to be concentrated somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you're not that, and this is the ego part for artists, if you're not the man in your city to where niggas is just checking for your music, you gotta go where they- You gotta go where they checking look. for you and we won't check for So it. when you got a song with E40C, cause the thing is, they had a Mims joint that was hot. Mm -hmm. But it was like Mims was kind of cold. He was man. fizzling, yeah. He was fizzling. So Mims, that record wasn't going to spin off in New York and be like, yo, who these niggas that Mims got with? They, he was already kind of out off in New It'd York. like if you got a Mano so, feature right now. So, yeah, but Mano's never had a platinum fucking Grammy winning right. record. I'm, I'm just right. talking about You're stardom. Right. Star, star like E-40 right. is a, E-40 is to the bay what nigga Hove is to motherfucking New York City oh, to Brooklyn. What Snoop is to fucking Los LA, Angeles. Absolutely. What nigga Face is to Houston. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. E40 is that. So what I was trying to explain to them, and I think they understand that E40's big in the Bay, but I don't think they understood how big how he is like in what, the Bay. what that can do, what that sauce could do. So I remember telling them, I used to be on like, bro, we gotta go get that record. Like, man, does niggas, he and what on, he didn't realize niggas didn't pull, niggas, how bro, big we, that market is. My nigga was on it got no it got sticky, bro. Niggas my nigga we got it got sticky over this shit. Like so in that shuffle, we find out nigga that like E forty son leaked the record. Oh, so the thing is, is that now fucking every forty water Snoopy. fan has heard that joint, and this is the thing that breaks my heart. They think it's a forty song. I don't give a fuck about that. They heard that fire ass verse that my nigga spit from North Las Vegas, nigga, and they there's no way to give him recognition for it. Yeah, there's no way to tie all the million people, millions of people that I know have heard his verse and were like, yo, this nigga kind of nice. No nigga, who is this nigga? Or BMI there's no stats. way for them to be like, oh, that's that nigga, that's this, there, there, there was never no, like, so there's no, there's no connection to what, what my nigga Chrome does now and things like that. That's fucked And up. that hurts me. Nah, Cause I sure. seen that and was just like, yo bro, that, that right there, I felt like was gonna be, could have been the record that sent that nigga over the top because, and it felt like if them niggas got it in that situation, they all would have did that. Cause it was two of them niggas on the record it was my, you know what I'm saying? It was, two, it was two of the homies on the record. They both killed it, and 40 killed it. Because their verses, and I remember Chrome told me this, it was out of like, I guess, two songs that I had swindled that he had maybe another verse or something that he was thinking about spinning. One was more like, you know, he's versatile, nigga, so it was some shit that you could hear him. I could hear E-40 on that one, too. It would have just been more a little like, you know, a little mm -hmm. up-tempo or something, right? But then he made the genius decision, dog, to walk in there and spit the verse that that makes nigga like that that poured the verse that 40 had my fault. Damn. The verse that Chrome and, and, and my nigga SK spit, 40 had to put a verse on there, nigga, that matched it. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a motherfucking master. So it took 40 back into a space that I hadn't heard that nigga in years. Cause this is like, you know, nigga, you know, everybody going stupid, everybody's in that area. So this is around that, like, this is when I'm hearing this shit, the, the sound that I'm hearing in the bay. Like, it's the only the underground niggas, the street niggas that's still kind of giving it up like that. 40 gave him one of those verses. Right. It's one of those pain verses, one of those verses from rags to riches. And I'm not talking about being this flyest nigga. I'm not talking about, nigga, my swag or nothing, nigga. Let me, let me tell you what this pen like, nigga. 
shit wasn't always sweet. That nigga said, nigga, his breath was stinking because he couldn't afford a root canal. I, I, and I remember that just hit me different. I'm like, damn, that mean for 40 to think that while he's writing that nigga, that took him somewhere. Right. But see, I listen to music different. I don't want to be a rapper. But I study this shit, nigga. I study, I study poetry. I study words. I study the English language in terms of how you niggas can commute with each, can, can communicate with each other. And so when I heard that shit, it moved me. And I was like, damn. And my nigga Crohn's verse was stupid. So I'm like, yo, this is it, nigga. This could be the one. And it was never a way. I, we never got it in our hands because my plan was the nigga to shoot it because you was nigga, DJ thick heavy nigga all over the city then, nigga. Because I'm thinking about the remixes and shit that niggas could do. I'm thinking of all like I'm like yeah, you yo. You know I probably did through a dubstep remix. And not to mention or a trap. One. Not to mention, I knew that I can get that on the radio in Reno. Mm -hmm. That's what hurt me. It's like yo, cause nigga, I'm like bro, fuck this Vegas shit. Like nigga, I can go up north, nigga, and get this on the radio where it matters. Bro, you can get it on the radio, uh, KMEL in the Bay. Where it matters. Right. Where it matters because I think respectfully, like Forty's camp was waiting for them to do something mm -hmm. with it. He was featured on it. Well, but that's it, what you would do if but you were the, the feature. But the, the, the jewel in this is like, that camp leaked it. That that's what you know that's, how hot it that's was. That's what tell you, dog, nigga, this ain't sitting, nigga, just somewhere. Right. Like, that's how, that's how you know the heat of Put it. Put right. that out. And he lost the heat of it. And he didn't get to, like, ca capitalize on that. And, it, and I'm not going to say it was necessarily his fault. No, no, I didn't say because he lost it. No, I know. He didn't lose it personally. I was just you. I was just putting that out there because I'm telling his story, fam. But, like... Yeah, man, that was a that was a moment in time, but I learned a lot from that shit. That's why every song I record is at my brother's house. My brother has all the fucking equipment these studios have. My brother has right. had E forty in that studio. No, I know. You know what I'm saying? No, so, I know. Nigga, I have my masters to everything. That'll never unless something happens to my brother's shit, which means something has to all his shit and he loses his shit. See, and too, that's the thing that a lot I know of cats my shit's good. That's the thing that a lot of cats didn't uh really like pay attention to. Like I know a lot of cats that think they, they rap for sport almost in a sense that like they want to see if something happen, but they don't study the business acumen of the music industry. I know where all, or at least rap culture. I know where all the doc's music is from beats to all my well, verses, and that's the thing. What I be rhymes, telling people nigga, is all that my songs is all. If you got our show shit on all streaming platforms and all the platforms accessible, like man, just have your shit dressed up, man. Yeah. That's the best way because you never know, bro. Like who's listening, like. Your way in the game, sometimes get niggas get in the game because they have to sue a nigga for stealing their shit. And another thing, another thing I want to tell you, stop waiting for an album to put out a hot song. If you feel like you got something, yeah, streaming, that's put dope. that bitch out. Because, nigga, you might get hot. You might get 100, 100 features off that, nigga, while you're on your way to your album, making the check. Nigga, performing that one song on TV shows and shit because you a viral hit now, nigga. That's a fact. That one song's all over TikTok, smacking. Oh, uh, let me see. Hold on, though. You know what? It was something I did want to share with y'all. On that list I sent you, I don't mean to cut you off, fam. The was it the um, but, back page? But lift oh, tragedy. But lift tragedy. And we'll get to the back page and wrap it up with that, fam. I'm reading. I, you know, I'm on my shit, man. I'm just just going through some googles and going through some silly shit. I run across the story. South African girl moves to Los Angeles to join the film industry, adult film industry. And she met a lady um, that suggested some butt shots, told her that she can do them for her. It's a mother and daughter operation. She had about two, three, uh, she had three. Uh, illegal mother and daughter Right, operation. illegal mother and daughter operation. We don't know if she knows that, but one would assume she knows that, but being that she's not a native of this country, she might not. She might not have, even though they were doing these, they had a setup in their home. So that might have been, you know, to, to us in America, we were like, you you going to do surgery at your house? But somebody no, else that doesn't understand, like, somebody the that doesn't understand the customs, and shit not even that, that you're just the to customs have. here. Right. Because in other countries, medical people probably come to your, can come to your home and do yeah, stuff. Yeah, they probably right? do house calls. Right. Too, so, sure, yeah. exactly. So she probably, you know, didn't think nothing of it and, or whatever, but. Uh, she later died from complications of uh, the, the injections. Now, silicone embolism. Well, no, what it was is they gave her. The doctor said that they almost got it right. Like they they had they obviously ripped off or had some kind of backdoor connection to 
the the the, the um, ingredients or whatever it is. I don't know exactly what it was, but well, it, it says it was a silicone. Right, embolism. it was something like that. Some kind of you know, I'm not a scientist guy. I'm not going to even play with it. It was just some kind of chemical, but they mixed it with another chemical that makes it deadly. That if they had the medical you know profession, they would have known that oh, that's a deadly combination. You can't mix that. But they were trying to just give it a little extra, I guess, and and they and they're really injecting young ladies, nigga, with shit that they didn't made in the kitchen, and with shit from under the sink. Yeah, and now they're being tried for murder, as they should be, in my opinion. So, uh, shout out to the victim. I do not uh, didn't get your name. Sorry about that. We're not that type of pod. It is what it is. Got your story out there though. Oh, we ain't gonna do her like that. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna look your name up, Shorty. Ladies, get insurance, get a good job, her get, a look, name get a side was... gig, pay for that expensive bag if you're getting your body fixed. Or just keep what you got. That's always good, but I'm speaking Carissa, to the ones that's Carissa not good. Carissa that. Rajpal. Shout out to Carissa. May she rest in peace. Tragic, 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 tragic story. Um, they think that also uh, there might be um, some more victims coming out. I'm over BBLs. I don't like plastic surgery unless it's something that you need enhanced. Fact. No, I mean, I like it for medical reasons. Or like, okay, say for this. Say a woman has a bunch of kids. She doesn't like the way her breasts look because of breastfeeding and shit like that. I feel like, okay, go ahead. No nah, man, you keep them on orangutan titties. That's an asshole statement. Just no, I'm just playing. I'm just but playing. like that shit, go ahead. If you feel like you need a tummy tuck because you got or, or a lot of women, I'll give okay. you an example, like a, the straight example. Um, a lot of women, Kanye's mother was having right. a breast reduction, reduction. Right. because of the back pain. Same thing with Queen Latifah had yep. to do. She had to have a breast reduction because of the back. Those type of plastic surgeries, yes, absolutely. Um, speaking of BBLs and. All that. Have you been following this case from backstage or back door? Back page. Back, damn, I'm, what am I thinking? Yeah, them being, they've been, that shit's been a long time, bro. It's just another thing that just keeps pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. Yeah, well, they just, just ended in a mistrial. Oh, fuck. So they're going back $500 million at state in terms of like their mm-hmm. empire. But this is the thing. It became salacious because the prosecution is now... What they did at the last minute is try to introduce. They're trying to charge them with child por- with a child pornography they're trying ring. Trying to move the goalpost. And, and child- <laughs> trying to move the goalpost because they couldn't get it done hey, right the first time. Hey, hold on. Move we the goalpost goal merch coming soon, my nigga. Yeah, we got to coming we soon, got to, bro. Okay. So look, man. <laughs> they, they moving, moving the goalposts, goal right? <laughs> and this is what made the judge and them throw this shit out. And the jury was like, yo. We've been doing this for a while, and like, when did when did y'all start accusing them motherfuckers of like child porn. of child porn, our child our sex trafficking? Yeah, rate? like what the well, fuck? Well, this is the thing. It's conspiracy, and it's this is the thing, man. Like, the the people need to pay attention. The FBI has been giving a new bag of tricks, and they are having a ball with them. Field day with Look, this shit. do you know Rico cases used to be hard? As fuck, and to you used to have one. to go up the yeah. ladder to get approval Supreme to spend Court that kind of money shit, right. to like follow somebody and use all those resources. Now they throwing, they just giving it out. Six nine got a Rico case, fam. Right. Uh, NBA young boys head of a Rico case now. Um, casting over two time Rico. Nigga, like, the dude from uh, the Girls Gone Wild got hit with a Rico. Go, the child jo- Joey, yeah. Rico. Uh, child porn ring. Kels, yeah, come on, Rico. Rico. Now. I'm not saying any of these people did or didn't deserve it. All I'm saying is, is that the way these niggas are throwing Ricos out like They're magic Rico showtime, out like no Camden, look nigga. passes, my nigga. Like you, nigga, Oprah, you get a Rico, nigga. You, you get, get a Rico. Rico. Like nigga, if you if it's more ten of y'all and y'all made some money together, you, you can be Rico. Yep. I told people this a long time ago. They said I was nerding out, but I was like, yo, nigga, when they made those uh little changes to the Patriot Act, nigga, they kind of threw some Rico weird ass mm-hmm. shit in there. That's kind of crazy. So now gangs are considered terrorist groups. Yep. Drug entities and pimping and pandering empires are terrorist organizations. So they have pimping a, and pandering went from pimping and pandering. That's to why niggas who pimping and pandering went from like thirteen months. 
tops to life to, to third to three months in in prison with uh probation to 50 years to life and shit like that nigga real quick without any legislations being passed they just amped up the rules and now they while they're getting the legislations passed so it's going to get even more crazier which guess what it's always the people look when the drug game wasn't violent nobody had a problem with it nope right damn near drugs was almost legal doctors was doing coke when we was killing ourselves and shit over no no there, no, no not we... that not that hear me out before it became violent when before poor people start dealing in drugs because mm -hmm. that's who made it violent you poor motherfuckers you poor motherfuckers out there right <laughs> because you poor motherfuckers is greedy you, you don't understand that making $3,500 a day, nigga, is a great lifetime. If you can sustain that, nigga, live it. You're looking to take over his block because he's making $86 a day. And it becomes violent. So it messed up the whole drug culture in this country. And then that now they're able to, like, infuse that on one sector of peoples, right? And make us carry the butt of it while drug culture ain't never went nowhere because judges like doing coke. Right. Hey, there's a lot of judges that can't have sex with those young prostitutes unless they're on coke. There's a lot of senators and stuff like that. They can't get the young girls in the party and stuff like that in the club unless they have coke. Everybody smokes weed. We now know that because if you go to your local dispensary, you see all the Every people. You see all the people life. that used to call Every the fucking police on you life. for smelling like weed and smoking weed at the park, buying weed. Mm -hmm. So that was a lie. Right? Dirty so drug bullshit. culture is not as what we always been taught that it was. Right? Let me calm myself down. So everything is is tied into that in the sense that now with these new funny laws like and and, and and like the way they're doing these Ricos, they're still we still know. We still know that the elite are still doing all the stuff that they do. And every once in a while, they'll get caught. And they'll get a little, you ain't supposed to be doing that because we got to, you know, show them people that you ain't supposed to be doing that. But we all know that. There's only a certain type of people that goes to prison behind the drug trade, right? People that look like us and people that look like a select others in this country. So with that being said, it's like, man, these Rico, I'm, I'm all for them rico and like others. The right people. I'm all for them, Rico and others. And, like, that's what, I mean, I've heard several prosecutors get on TV and say, yo, this Donald Trump shit Rico. is a Rico. Right. If that nigga had cornrows and was rapping, He'd have a whole every Rico. fucking body that's lying and not going to court for him would be facing fucking 70 years, fam. In a nutshell, you think 6 9 was more detrimental to society? Than the shit that this motherfucker, that these, these elected officials no. are doing. Like, Fuck I'm just saying, no. bro. Like, we got to really start not having even, some real conversations. So, the fact that they freestyling these Ricos, man, like, I just want everybody to be careful. Because you fuck they're going you after, they, they bit off more than they could chew and got too cute and got slapped for it. So, now they got to go back to trial. And move the goalposts some more. And move the goalposts some more. But where they messed up is they were getting so comfortable with, the, with all these Rico. This Rico shit fun, nigga. We getting this. Oh, throw the Rico in there. So when it was tough in this case, they was like, you know what? Rico. Fuck it. You own this site. Okay? So every young girl and every female that's pimped and pandered on this site. is now your fault. You're responsible for it. That is how they do Rico's. Hey, Casanova, y'all call yourselves the apes. We notice your label has the word ape in it. And we notice that you're always rapping and saying ape shit. And, got and we know that your uh, logo is an ape. We know that you used to be affiliated with this gang known as the apes. Even though that you have an LCC and you paid millions of dollars in taxes and you now have a legitimate business that employs hundreds of people. Eh. We feel like everything that the street niggas in the, that the, and that's in the gang, we know that you ain't affiliated. We know you stopped being gang banging. We know all that shit. But you used to be a gang banger. Mm -hmm. And you still wear red. And you still say gang shit. You still say, you still act like a gang member to an extent. You still have gang member mannerisms, right? Because could you imagine saying, like, hey, John Gruden, you have like white supremacist mannerisms, nigga. I think we need to recall your ass. Everybody that worked for him, you had to know this. Mm hmm. You heard, whoa, you, he sent you the email. 
<clears throat> but we don't look at that as a crime like that because that's not something that we afflict on others. It's only afflicted on us. So, hey, black boy that's made it out of the hood and makes five times more than us. That's driving my dream car and putting rims on it. That's eating at the restaurants my wife wants to eat at for our 50th anniversary. And your pants are sagging. You're going to be the head of this criminal enterprise because we can prove that you know some of these dudes because you grew up in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You used to be in this gang. So it's just like every non, every ex-Nazi is responsible for every hate crime. Every all the Holocaust, yep. That, that's what we're talking about. But because it only happens to a certain type of people, no one wants to get articulate when you're talking about a Rico when it's rappers. Like, why in the fuck is A Boogie and them being investigated for Rico charges? Because you can prove that he gave $10,000 several times over to a handful of friends that he grew up with that protected him and looked out for him that he had to leave behind. Like, yo, I, I can't take everybody with me, but nigga, when I come around, here goes some bread. Now, they done went and did something. They went and got a couple peas with the bread. That's a criminal enterprise, really? Right. That's what we're using our government for? You know what I'm saying? But Flint, Michigan got poisoned on purpose. And the legislator in the late hours of the night just rewrote a law that says that you can't nigga criminally punish the, the legislator. Yeah, fuck out of here. Like, come on, fam. Jaden Smith had to go save the water in, 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 in Flint. Where all yeah. that money go that went to Flint? They they old they need to get that shit to Will Smith's son. Right? He need to pay that nigga back. I'm just saying, bro, like all that government money, every rapper and celebrity, all nigga pray for Flint and, and spend some money and shit. They need to re nigga, reverse those checks right to Jaden's account. Because him and his friends, nigga, smoking weed in his daddy's garage, nigga, created a system where it was like, yo, bro, I think this should have saved the water in Flint. And went out there, nigga, and now they niggas damn near getting the Nobel Peace Prize and shit. Like, this shit is crazy, fam. We got to really start talking about shit. Mm -hmm. This world is fucked up. So, was it back page, right? Now, everybody know about the back page, especially if you're from the sin and from the know. Man, you know what, what I mean? was funny is when Backpage first went down is seeing all these motherfuckers scramble. Yeah, because you know what they did? <laughs> this is my take on this, and I'll, I'll open the floor to you give you some comments. Fam, they didn't play the game. So you got two type of drug kingpins, or kingpins. The kingpins that enlist and pay politicians and police officers. Give back to the community. And it seemed to be charitable and reputable. And then you got the kind that lives in the underworld and acts like it. Or that's just like, yo, I'm getting this money. I ain't doing nothing wrong. They can't, I ain't did nothing. They can't catch me on nothing. But here's the thing. I don't feel like Backpage was that. Backpage was an alternative to Craigslist. I, the reason why I say that is because once Craigslist went down right. and they start being that spot that was popping, they didn't do what OnlyFans did. Right. You got greedy. Greedy as fuck, you right. You got greedy. And corporations do that. They're thugs. They it's thuggery to it. They're like, nigga, why we gotta pay the government? I don't wanna do this got all these licenses and shit and all this why we wanna pay these motherfuckers this much? I don't wanna uh nah. All the loop and it's all internet nah. based, so there's hell You know what OnlyFans did? Shit. They sat back and watched Craigslist. They sat back and watched it. Okay. So now guess what? If you decide to be the only fan killer, them bitches was your fans. Mm -hmm. They was they was patronizing you. Mm -hmm. We're just a vehicle. That's not our page. Nope. That's not our site. We're a host site with yeah. individual we're a sites. Hub. Yeah, we're a hub for it's a hub. Yep. You sicko. Yeah, get them out of here. That's not what we're about. But and when it's Craigslist, it. they reversed it. When is you know what I'm saying? What OnlyFans? They're doing. They didn't taking the porn down. No, I know that. Uh -oh. I'm not. That, that's not the point. My my point is that they're they're not liable for the porn. Yeah. They, yeah, because they figured out through the loopholes of the way up. we are where we are in society now. Yeah, they're gonna just pushing the envelope. Like, okay, well, until they say we liable for doing this, we gonna do this. We are gonna sit right here on the line. Some go crazy, then we be like, okay, all right, you know what I mean? They got they left themselves some wiggle room. And I mean, there's a sexual component to it, but nigga, we can have an OnlyFans. No, we are. This, I mean, you know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about like, get the I'm right talking location. About, I'm not talking about literally. I'm talking mm -hmm. about in terms of like, we can have one. Like, it's, it doesn't have, they're not going to be expecting us to be whacking off or some Pause. crazy shit, right? Pause. But 
that's my point. It's like nigga, they ain't gonna because you know some people heard OnlyFans and they all they know is nudity and porn, yeah, so they thinking like, oh, there. if I tell, oh, go to OnlyFans, I'm like what? Hold on, pause, nigga. Well, like, you they might pause me on that. They might, right? So it is what it is, man. Uh, just wanted to see what you thought about that, and then. That's pretty much all I got for the night. Oh no, we're gonna finish it up with, with with this without going into detail. Or you just wanna wait till Wednesday so I can watch the shit. No, cause this honestly don't have to do with that. Because I wanted to compare it to that, that story. You know, you get what I'm trying to say? With with with, with uh with the ex coach. You want me to just knock As far as like the back page shit. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to Zero. Zero got you the. Just got munchies. My nigga Zero got the got the little late night munchies. One o'clock in the morning. Nigga. Hey man, can I pause real quick? Shout out to my oldest sister. Uh, well, my second oldest sister. Shout out to both of my sisters. When I came in here, I got off the phone with my oldest sister, Latrice. It was her birthday, and now that it's after midnight, it's my other sister's birthday. All right, so you know the headache I have, right? God bless you both. Shout out to you. Happy birthday. Zero. Just while Zero was getting, you know, finishing look. <laughs> this nigga eating loud as shit, though. Like, hey, he's slow eating it, too, though. Yeah. Like, he know, like, oh, y'all niggas. I know y'all niggas doing this. Fuck you, nigga. That nigga definitely was like, man, fuck y'all show. Bitch ass, man. I want to throw something at this Move my bowl, nigga. nigga. <laughs> I really want to throw something at this nigga. My God, man. Let, let Zero eat, man. Let him get his little I just feel on. like the government needs to mind its own fucking business, and it makes enough money off of mu- enough corporations through tax and all that shit to not have to recall a motherfucker to get their issue, nigga. You losing the tax from a motherfucker on a $500 million business ain't going to hurt nothing, nigga. Period. Because right now, my nigga, you're not even taxing the wealthiest 1%, and we're looking like we're going to have to tax Take another loan out with another one of these countries, nigga. And what? And and oh, I don't mean to go on a tangent, but I, nigga, I just had think? this thought the other day. What happens when these niggas call due? What, what, what happens when niggas be like, "Hey, need them tees back"? <laughs> you want me to tell you what happened? Yeah, we give up land. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, what you mean? We going to war, nigga? What you mean? Like they know they can't do that. That's the fucked up thing. It's like loaning money to the bully. <laughs> it's like Debo being like, let me hold $20, nigga. You ain't getting that back. Right when he seen Craig getting his paycheck, nigga. Like, Craig going to give him the 20 knowing no, he he's getting never that getting that 20 back, fam. And if he do, it's a kamikaze man. It's you or me. It's going to be just like when he had to fight the nigga and hit him with the brick. <laughs> Because that's he had what it to, would be. Because he hit his bitch. He had to do it. Because as soon, because yeah, as soon as China came through, like, hey. What you mean, dog? China, we need them tees back. They don't want that. Oh, you going? Nigga, we going? It's gonna be bombs over China. Nigga. Hey, man, when uh, Saudi Arabia be like, "Yo, we want," nigga, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't want no, that don't. back. Think about that again and call us back, my nigga. <laughs> you that <laughs> we, gangster? Think hey, about bro, that again, you fam. You really might want to think about that payback. And call us my back. Nigga. Call me back when if you. If you think really... America's paying you what we owe you when you say, "Nigga, get the fuck out of here," we got a whole bunch of poor kids we didn't indoctrinate in our military. That's killers, nigga. Like. They coming over and knocking your shit off. Nigga, we don't even, we don't even take care of our own downtown. We got nigga, all you think type we of big you like, back? What you talking about, nigga? Like we ain't we don't we don't do that. You see this big ass bomber plane over here, nigga? We gonna drop. You see the drone, nigga? We don't even have to come to you, Damn. nigga. We. <laughs> it's gonna be a fucking highly intelligent right, just... naval academy graduate, nigga, sitting there playing video games with you, <laughs> niggas. Like man, he said playing video. Like, games. Where you want me to drop this shit off at? Oh, at the at their federal at their reserve building, like what do you want me to drop this shit off? Like, talking yeah. high, like high score in there, nigga. Dog, we just, we just have proven we've done it before. We we have destabled countries, and that's why I say people have to have conversations because a lot of times it's layman terms. It's like, oh, they destabled the country, yeah. and niggas will say that and don't even know what you mean. You know what you have to do to destabilize a country? So let's take America for an example. Let's say some power had the ability to, and they coming over to destabilize us. So okay, Capitol Hill gone. Yep. Right. Wherever our big water supplies and gone, shit like that, taking over, gone, right? Whatever mountain they can knock off to fuck up the mess, the most, like, not right. <laughs> Nigga, they hitting L.A., New York, Philly, D.C. Like everything that's that makes the country go is gone, gone. All banks. Gone. Gas stations. They they, what else down, Americans they like? Knock down the trade center Go on, again. fam. They gonna fuck yeah. up the trade that, I'm saying in a hypothetical space, like that's how they will destabilize a, a, a nation like America. So when people hear those terms, 
they don't really fully understand. Like, yo, they're knocking they over highways knock shit off. and bridges. Yeah. They're turning, like, thriving Blowing countries. Up the ports. They're taking thriving countries and nations and making them third world countries again. So, I mean, we did it to motherfucking Afghanistan and Iraq. We was over there fucking shit up. Yeah. And then just fixed it. And then left in there fucking it up again. Because it's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I don't think so. I think we we came, we conquered, we we, we got everything we needed, we out. Yeah. And that's why they ain't really, uh, y'all come back. Because the way the Taliban was able to come back lets me know that the Taliban probably wasn't even all that bad. Because I mean, I'm hearing people in Afghanistan, and I know I might sound ag- ignorant. God forgive me. I'm just going off of what I see. And as an American, we don't trust our government and the shit that we see on the news. So when I'm seeing a lot of so-called native Afghani people speaking highly of the Taliban and and shitting on the U.S. military that's been over there allegedly raping their women and doing all kinds of foolery and doing all type of shit, getting drunk, partying, fighting, all type of shit, right? In an Islamic country, right? They might be better. They might feel like, nah, bring the Taliban back. All right. We disagree ide- ideology. We can get past that like every civilized nation has had to do, right? But when you bring foreigners that think little of us and occupy us, shit, that's treating us like African Americans. We don't want to go through that. Get out of here. Cool, leave. Right. Right. The faulty politicians left. You see that? See the faulty politicians got about it there too. Yeah, the Taliban's for the cut heads off, nigga. Come on, fam. And if they really saying that they're not gonna do all those restrictions on women and shit like that, then I I think they need to be given a chance. Right. They need to be given a chance. Hey, but America's not the only one with a gun. So if other nations feel like what's going on that's wrong over there, niggas, to take your ass over there and help those people. Right. Take your ass over there and help those people, we'll man. Wait. God bless everybody. And on that note, if you finish with that topic, mm-hmm. we're not going to get into the um, the closer because uh, Dre hasn't got a chance to get into that yet. And it's no, no, it's cool though, because it's one of those things, fam. That you, it is better to, because I watched this shit like four times already. Oh, it's going one of the things. So you gotta like, you do, you kind of gotta watch, get your bag in there, man. Get you know, give you some time. By Wednesday, you'll be like, you'll be ready to really like give it what it's deserved. Day smoke a whole eighth to this shit to give it what it deserved. You Mm -hmm. feel me? So before you say this, before you prep, let me say this. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to cancel Dave Chappelle. Let me tell you can't why cancel. you can't cancel Dave Chappelle. You can't cancel a nigga who walked away from 50 M's one time. Period. He don't give a fuck. He's... If, if a nigga walks away from 50 M's, there's not much you can do to that man, tell that man, to hurt that man's feelings, my nigga. Let's be real. That's a nigga who stands on his 10... And has no price. A man who has no price, you can't cancel because he'll never apologize to you. Because there's no amount of money worth his motherfucking soul and dignity and for him to backtrack what he said. Now, another reason you won't be able to fire Dave Chappelle or cancel Dave Chappelle is because niggas ain't going to allow you to. So, why? I'm going to keep it real. White people. Do not make up enough of his check. And these promoters, they're not going to stop booking Dave Chappelle because they know Dave Chappelle will sell out just on nigga sales alone. He don't need the white crowd. And I'm not trying to make this racial, but I'm trying to make you understand certain people in certain positions are uncancelable. Him, he's one because that's a man who ain't never apologized to none of you motherfuckers. Ever. Anything he said. And let's think about who we're talking. That's a well articulated oh. and well researched man. He's not speaking on this. Me, go ahead, my bad. I'm just saying, you just, we, we, that's what we was getting to, fam. But remember, I said, I was like, well, we about to, I'm going to tell him, because I wanted to correlate it just to this, because you haven't seen it. And so I, I want you to, like, when you get into your bag on it, to only, because we're not talking about him. Abroad, like you know, what I'm saying uh-huh. the character. You going off Dave Chappelle, the man, the brand, and what you know about him. What I'm trying, I was trying to correlate this just to our earlier story. Uh-huh. That's why I said I want to get out of here real quick on this one. Oh, uh, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Because I already feel it. You about to get in your bag. That's your. I know it. 
but it's just gonna drive us down a, a road to where I'm gonna end up saying something, nigga, that's in the thing. And, yeah, go ahead. Cause you already said something that he touched on. Uh, and they, like people don't really realize you ain't well, seen Well, no, I was going off of um, what um, Jerry Seinfeld said about him. Well, no, let me. Jerry Seinfeld said that the one thing he respects well, most about. Jerry Seinfeld is preps, nigga. You gotta, you gotta reference him. Oh, yeah, my bad. So, what I'm speaking of is so Jerry Seinfeld said this, and it explains it best, and I'll let him take over oh, that. Yeah. He said one thing he loves most about Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. is he stands by everything he says. And the next time you see him in a special, he's going to double down on some shit that almost that was canceling him in the last one. Mm -hmm. He does not apologize. And like I said, he's well articulated, well, well researched. So he's not somebody who's spewing bullshit. But go ahead. My bad. No problem. Yes, sir. Mm. To add what you just said. Mm. The lesson in this to me, if you follow on Dave, we all want to have our opinions and stand on our own shit. Mm -hmm. But can you? Right. There, yeah, can you? <laughs> I don't mean, do you have the intestinal fortitude? A lot of people do. Are you? Right. There's a lot of people that's broke, but you can't pay them to do nothing if they don't want to do it. Right. But he's not broke. Nope. Will never be broke. See the lesson for Dave in this ain't, He's not talking necessarily To everyday people It's like when Lil Boosie say All these major artists from major labels Always hit me and be like Yeah Boosie keep going hard nigga, on this shit Because they're the, they're the alpha, alpha males That when they sign a deal A branding deal And are obligated to do a photo shoot These motherfuckers are coming with them With a dress Yep but they can't come out and just be like, no, nah, these motherfuckers trying to make me act gay and they're trying to make me act trans and all this shit is some bullshit. Yeah, you will cancel them. Yep. And they are in an infrastructure where they're cancelable. Yep. What Dave Chappelle is saying at a height where all the big fucking uh, top comedians were complaining and being fearful like, man, I can't do no stand-ups right now because everybody is sensitive and I don't want to get canceled. Yeah, he said, fuck you. He reminded them of why this, why this, this race of I'm, humans yeah. love stand-up comedians. Yep. Cause they're the they're the he, they said it was one of the last free forms of art. It's one of the last exactly uncensored forms it, of art. Exactly because you can't censor comedy. So what he was fighting, you can try. And that what he's fighting is like no, you're not going to censor me, and you're not going to censor me because you don't like what I said. Okay. Nope. He makes some points that I don't want to give it away. But my issue is, is everybody that has seen this. And even if you haven't seen it, the reason why I felt like comfortable that we could still get in this bag mm -hmm. is because you know the all the shit that goes on the, the, the contentious that relationship that he has yep. with the trans community. Yep. Some of the trans community, yep. right? He tells a very, very, very deep, vivid telling story um that proves that he's not some transphobe right. without him trying to prove it. He's just telling some of the facts of what happened. Mm -hmm. Sometimes life works out to teach your ass a fucking lesson if you listen. And if you pay attention and sometimes someone's intelligent enough, strong enough and brave enough to know that to pull that, that lesson, lesson together, right? To be the vehicle of that lesson. Like, yo, this is what's going on right now, fam. Well, we so know the we question know is of them that got killed for making their vehicle right, a lesson, nigga. Right. The right. The question I I had asked um, was. <coughs> Dave Chappelle, what well, was the question? It was more of a statement, a phrase. Dave Chappelle. And the LBGTQ mafia, not community mafia. I, I think that there's a difference. And what the, the what what I was saying earlier is that you know there's all kind of different extremes, right? Um, if there's black extremists, if there's, there's LGBTQ extremists, if there's you know religious extremists, there's yeah, there's like you said, there's extremists, political everywhere. extremists, nigga. There's right? sports uh, fan extremists. So nigga. I'm just saying, like, if there's political <laughs> we'll extremists, right? So with all that being said, fam, what is gonna be the outcry and the, I guess the, the 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 need to cancel or speak out against Roger Goodell? I mean, uh, John Gruden. For his Roger Goodell comments. Uh, here's my thing on just this whole thing in general. 
LGBTQ community tries to align themselves with Black Lives Matter and the struggles of what black people went through, you always try to compare these things. Do you think they do that? Or do you think the I powers think, that we're fighting together, I even though we're fighting I th- separately, I think does two that? two things can be true on that one. Okay. Me too. That's why I said that. I, I, um, think I agree. I think two things can be true. Well, if you want to align yourself with what we go through, we can't cancel the people who are oppressing us every day. Stop trying to cancel every fucking body. Deal with it. Take your fucking L. Deal with getting talked about. Black people get talked about and dogged every day of the fucking week. Somewhere. Somewhere. In some news station. Somewhere around this fucking country. One of our people's being talked about. Some of our our ancestry is trying to be wiped out of history books. Stop trying to cancel people and just figure out how to get along with these motherfuckers or educate these well, motherfuckers. Like I, I think what you learn from that Dave Chappelle special that he's that's so brilliant is he points out you can't judge no community can accuse society of not not supporting them, not uplifting them, not accepting them without being given the opportunity to have a conversation. Right. See, at the end of the day, the black community, when it's in its fights for liberation and it's, and, and, and it's homeland, yep. we want half the, the people that we we're talking, half the people we're having these conversations yep. with think that we came off of a boat from Africa. Yep. So with that being said, is that like, if you don't have, if the very people that you have to fight for liberation and coexistence and, and acceptance from don't even know your full existence, that's contentious. And you guys don't go through that. But when we, well, I'm not telling anybody what they do and don't go to. Because a lot of men don't know what it's like to be a fucking man and feel like a woman. Yeah. I you either, and the thing is, the problem is a lot of men don't believe it. So they just write them off. I'm oh, fucking weird, man. He a sissy. Right? No, he just had, he was he a boochie he's boy, like. The wrong gender. But that's no, real. Like, but no, what I, he, I what he has, and we understand it. what he, what, what that individual is going through is something that the average male doesn't understand. Doesn't understand. Right. The average female doesn't, doesn't understand. understand. Right. And so what the human race does is when they, when they see something different, we're, we ostracize it. We first. ostracize it. Yeah. Unfortunately. As a group, not I'm, co- I'm talking collectively as humans. Yeah, yeah. We ostracize it. Like, what the fuck is that? I think you weird. What are you doing? I don't want to be around this. Hey, man, he. And people are so fickle in that way that, yeah, man, any. Because I think that, that evolution of human is, to, is, to, uh, is evolution of, of mind and understanding as well, which is why you can have ministers that are very much prophetic and very much in line with their teachings. They're good people. And they accept gays and trans people in their communities. Okay, I mean, you know I, what I'm saying? I was just seeing if that's where you're going. With that. In their communities, they they connect those things, right? But it was a time where you wouldn't, it, the church wouldn't accept you teaching the teachings of their Christ right. or their Messiah in any right. kind of way to people that they didn't feel worthy. Whether it was black people, whether it was whoever, yeah. women, whether it was fucking, you know what I mean? Right. So, I just think the evolution of us. Has to start with a conversation, if, but um, if I can't say a joke, yeah, right. Now look, as a black American, a white comedian can stand in front of me and make fun of black people, but he has to be able to. He has yeah, to. You gotta be. There, a t- it better be artist no, artistry. No, no. The shit. way that it has to be real and authentic. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. The joke ain't funny, nigga. It's just a bad. It wasn't funny. So, but but, let me know but just because it wasn't funny, don't mean that I feel. Like you're trying, like nigga, are, what, what kind of shit is that? I don't feel insulted. Right. See, but the thing is, we get into a place of the uneducated. You got motherfucking white American parents that don't even want their kids to learn the history of what white people did to black Dude, people. Do you remember that country. fucking video? So what I does that you? lead us to? That's gonna lead to a whole bunch of good-hearted, creative, funny, talented white people threatening to get canceled. Niggas calling them racist, and they're going to be in a place of not understanding. Like, what do you mean? I just said this. I didn't know that was a big deal. See, like, it's always that deny ability. You know what I'm saying? Unless you know that they know. John Gruden don't get that because he's a man of a certain age. Right. You know but if better. John Gruden you was 28 better. years old, nigga, that would have been nothing. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't. 
I didn't mean racial. He does right. have big lips. I just I was right. I didn't I was being insensitive. And I hear young white people be like, man, like they think everybody's so sensitive. But I'm like, no, nigga, you're you're here. You're not. If it wasn't for like some of the most heinous crimes in in human history, you wouldn't even be here. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? But no, there's not too many white Americans that walk around with that humility because society has not made them face that. You can't have those conversations. They'll create some shit called create, uh, critical race theory that nobody can really explain and again, make it sound like a thing to like it, to, to you know weaponize it. And now if you're a mom, nigga, that's just working, like, what the fuck is a critical race theory? Parents are already weary of new shit that they're trying to teach their kids because in California they just said that, hey, every toy store has to have a, g- a gender neutral toy aisle. I don't bathrooms even know. Bathrooms now have to, there has so, to be a gender neutral bathroom. So now. in my mind, I'm thinking, like, okay, so that means, like, it's going to be toys like, what the fuck is a gender neutral toy? Right. Like, Water guns, like paintings, like, you know, etch and sketch shit. Like, what are you talking about? Like, are you talking about like a, a human that doesn't have a gender in a toy form? Is that what you're talking about? Because that sounds like, Barbie doll. that sounds like fucking indoctrination. Where do you got that? Right. Though? All Barbie and Ken dolls. I are know. Fucking gender well, no, neutral. Some people, some people got that, fam. I, there was never a Barbie and Ken doll in my Well, house. you know what I mean. I the it. people who have Barbie and Ken doll, they Right, but a lot, there, trust right. me, millions. It's why Barbie and them started to keep starting to make all these black dolls and shit. Millions of little black girls did not have Barbie dolls because their mothers was like, nigga, fuck, fuck out of here. You don't look like these that. White cabbage patch babies and shit. You don't look like that. But, but that's my whole culture and no, heritage. But shout out to Cabbage Patch. Oh no, they never did that. You're right. Because in the nigga, they had Patch all never did that. Huge, nigga. I'm, I fucked that up. Cabbage Patch. Shout out to y'all that. I remember my sister had my sisters had feet. Cabbage Patch because it was black yeah, girl. They had black Cabbage Patch. They had, the my thing is just common sense. It's just like with the emoji shit. I remember thinking I was telling my man way before I was like, black I was like, bro, eventually they're gonna have to have black emojis. And they what they see is, oh, some tech company or some inventor. Created a black emo- emoji app, and now damn near everybody that can get that app that's black that use our services has that. Let's knock him out of business and just throw the shit on ours. But even if you look at the black emojis now that that's that come with they your phone, white they're white emojis, skins. nigga, with dark skin colors, right. nigga. Like they they don't give a fuck about inclusion when it comes that to us. White fam. person comb over and shit. Like nigga, what black person look like this, nigga? Like with whatever. So like, if, you know what if, if 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 they do not. Come after Gruden. It's selective. And the reason why I'm saying this is because when you watch this shit, you're going to know why I ask this question. Everybody that's watching this knows that that's the question he posed. Why is it selective? If they do not attack Gruden, I will no lo- I can no longer support the LGBTQ, not the L, the, the trans community for the simple fact your ma- that, like you said, that mafia ain't sh- is is a motherfucker. You can't pick and choose who the fuck you gonna cancel. If you gonna cancel somebody for trans homophobic fucking comments, cancel them all. That's yeah, the only way we can do it. I get where you're coming from, and I feel your energy. But you're saying the same thing, because you're saying like if they don't, I'm done with them. When there's a big portion of the trans community that ain't that that don't got a problem with Dave Chappelle right and that's why when you watch so okay let me walk that back I do need to walk that back okay to the trans mafia we're not talking about the motherfuckers who are researched we're not talking about the motherfuckers who are 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 not picking and choosing the ones who who take every fucking issue as it should be. I'm I'm not talking about these. I'm talking about these organizations. Like these, some of these organizations are so uber political, and like, ideal focused that they move. That's why I said mafia because they move they like move, a mafia. They do, and I don't even think that they truly care about trans people. They don't. It's about it's just politicizing every everything, and it's like taking out some of their own personal aggressions and issues on everyone else. Like, man, I've never been harmful. Are are rude to a gay trans person in my life. There's a, oh I forgot to tell you. There's another like six letters to that. You know that. What do you mean? To the LGBTQ acronym. 
Uh, You're right. They just pull in. I'm leaving. I, I, in. I'm not adding another one. No, because no, I, str- I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but I struggle with LBGTQ. They be pulling in. That's, like, oh, that's kind of oh, hard to say a lot of times. gender community, cool. Y'all belong over here. Oh, there's this. Co- Y'all come over. You see what I'm saying? But they don't do nothing for nobody right. else. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, hey, fam, I've never seen a whole bunch of LBGTQ or rainbow flags, nigga, at any Black Lives Matter events. Nope. Until somebody got the idea to, like, Coin the phrase Black Lives Matter, make a nonprofit organization and reek in billions of dollars, nigga, and, and, and fucking donations that nobody black I know has ever Zero. seen or heard. I've never even heard. You know what my mother retired as. Like, mom, I've never even seen a fucking Black Lives Matter office, but I digress because I'm sure they could be doing a lot of good work. What right. I'm just saying is, I don't know. I, I know Black Lives Matter. I don't know Black Who's Lives that? Matter LLC. Right. I'm not a card carrying member of Black Lives Matter, and what we have to be careful is the politicizing of words and phrases. They do that. Yep. They're like, "Oh, he's part of the Black Lives Matter." What is that? Because that's a fucking phrase, and it's a nonprofit organization. So you're saying the person that shot at you and called you a, a, a race or tar- slur was a part of the nonprofit organization called? Because you can easily go find them. <laughs> What are we talking about? Right. <laughs> like, you're talking about Black Lives Matter like it's a fucking secret society, yeah. like a mafia or something. Like, like that fucking and I, you were saying, we were talking about the last episode, that little college shit. Like, it's that type shit. Like, right, we it's all in bones seat, type shit, nigga. Seat, yeah, bro. Illuminati society, like, nigga, what are we nigga? talking about? <laughs> and I be hearing this shit slide all day. Bro, they talk, so, about, they talk about Black Lives Matter like it's some type of, like, Cult, like not but cult, but like who it's talks some, about it though? The the fucking media, white media. But the thing is, it's just the white media. Well, certain media, certain media, certain, certain white, white media, media, certain white media that caters to a certain type of white person. Mm-hmm. And all I'm about to say is, all conservative the only thing, white media. Nope, let's that's, say that's, that. I, I, you can say that. I give you that. I get it. Because conservative now has become cold for white supremacist. So guess what the king gonna do? I'm declaring it right here. I'm never calling some random white chick that acts racist towards me, Karen. I'm going to find out her name mm-hmm. and call her her fucking name. And a conservative. Right? No. And a white supremacist that I see that's fighting for white supremacist rules and, 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 and writing up white, white supremacist X type laws and... No, no, you're just a fucking white supremacist. Because <laughs> think about it. Like, name a conservative that we know I'm not talking about your mother, your cousin, your sisters, and that's the thing. That's where it's so fucked up because a family member of mine that that thinks they're a conservative will be offended by this shit. And they're not really conservative. You think they give a fuck about you? Hey, look, if you don't got a hundred million in assets, nigga, they don't. the, the, The Republican Party don't give a fuck about you. Not one fuck. You can go look up. Donald Trump, when he's when he was asked if he'd ever run for president, and he made a joke like, "Well, shit." I'd be I a mean, Democrat if no, I did. I'd be a Republican if oh, I yeah, did. Because they're so they're because they're so stupid. dumb. Yeah, they'd elect me. Yeah. That's what he said. You were right. Yeah. Because they're so dumb. Yeah. Why was that prophetic? He's not talking about just the backwood. Oh, Trump's the savior ass motherfucker. He ain't talking about the stupid motherfuckers that, that rushed the Capitol. What he's talking about is the elites too. They're dumb. They're so dumb in their elitism and racism. That I'm a rich man, they would jump right behind me. Not to mention, these are the same people that said my father wasn't good enough because he did business with the blacks. Because mm-hmm. he did business with the motherfucking Italians. Like, Italians. Because he did, he, Trump's daddy got it out the mud. Right. He wasn't that old, old money that New York is, is, is running around with. So, nigga, he wasn't really always in the in crowd with the rich people, even though he was rich. He carried that chip on his shoulder. He became a celebrity. That's how he bypassed it. Because by being a celebrity and rich, oh, we had Trump here. He's a figure now. It, his money wasn't long enough to just get him that in New York City. Maybe in Nevada, not in New York City. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's just the whole loop. What Dave brilliantly, like, what he pulls out of you mm-hmm. is... Fam, we just got to start having conversations and telling the truth about shit. Yep. That's the only way we're going to make it. Because if I can duck. make a fun... Look, man, we all got that white friend that then crossed enemy lines. Mm-hmm. Florida Mac can get a black joke off at my fucking family house, nigga, on Thanksgiving. Right. If it's funny, we all laughing. Mm-hmm. 
If it ain't, Florida, my nigga, you're My nigga, Florida Matt, tuning into this show all the time. Nigga, he can easily be like, oh, this nigga always complaining about white supremacy. It's my brother, man. We have real combo fucking stations. So there's no, we don't got thick skin with each other, fam. Like, if some shit going on, it's going on. If So I know if Matt be like, oh, bro, I ain't fucking with them dudes over there. And then I turn around and there's three black dudes. I'm never looking at them like, oh, why? Because they black, like. No, you're gonna. There's a valid reason. Chances is I ain't fucking with him. Like, word, mm-hmm. what you know, nigga? Let's go. What happened? What happened with them niggas? That's my man's. So I'm not. I'm not talking strictly just no race shit. We're talking about good people versus them. And if there's, ba- if every one of us can be a bad of them, because we got motherfucking Candace Owenses and Sage Steels in our goddamn community, nigga. We got motherfuckers that we not proud of that don't serve us well. Yep. Hey, so do white people. And they're called white supremacists. They're called white supremacists. And guess what? They ain't helping you. Guess shit what? At all. There's certain elements of the LBGTQ community that come off as white supremacists. And that's where the question poses. If you're gay, does that mean you can't be racist? And that, and we'll we'll let let y'all leave it on that. <laughs> I really don't have anything else to say about it. Like, ask yourself that question: If you're gay or trans, does that mean that you can't be racist? Because I see a lot of young black men that come from a whole different environment and culture, where the lingo is different and where the meaning of lingo is different. I remember the word fag not ever having anything to do with a homosexual person in my community. Most of the dudes Never. I know, most of the dudes I know that use the word fag, they're talking about a certain type of female. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're talking about a certain type of female. So it's just one of those things like. Or I'm just talking about a, a dude, but he ain't gay. I know. I know several dudes that got brothers that they would shoot it out with or shoot it out for. That they didn't look at him like, nigga, you a punk, nigga. <laughs> I mean, you know you a punk, nigga. You ain't trying to. That nigga punked you. <laughs> So all I'm saying is this, like, I don't want to sound like a, con- a Confederate flag bearer nigga that's like, oh, you're taking our history. Hey, man, if a word is used and it offends a community, I'm articulate enough to nigga to get rid of the word. I don't have to use that word. But all I'm saying is, you know why nigga won't ever leave my mouth and the word nigga won't escape my fucking community? It's because I can say I can make a song called My Nigga, My Nigga, and nobody's offended by that. I could make a song called Nigga, I shot the nigga six times, nigga, he ain't died, so I killed him again. I could just I can kill a nigga a million times on record. And every culture and every community will bump that shit. Including the LBGTQ community. So it's just like if anybody that's offended at Dave Chappelle that's from that community, ask yourself, do you get offended when you listen to rap music? Right. Do you get offended when you when you listen to rap music? And if the thing is is that oh well those are rappers rapping about themselves, those are black people. Okay, well, is it okay for trans jokes to be told by trans people? Is that the criteria? Like, do you need to be a trans person to be able to tell a trans joke? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Trans person to be telling a trans like come on. But I don't know, man. Uh, it's an interesting man. The closer. It's out now, Dave Chappelle. Shout out to Netflix that uh, released a statement said they are not planning to pull that, which I knew they weren't. But um, yeah, it's been real. What you got, man? You got anything else? See you on your phone. What you was talking about? I'm just watching people argue about this stupid ass fucking game, bro. That's nuts. Well, not nah, because I'm like a whole fucking admin in there, so I have to look at shit. And I go in there, I'm just looking, you know, because I know we're closing the show, so I know what's going on. It's a whole group of people in this thing called OOC Talk, where we go when niggas is having an issue to talk, go look at whatever clips you got to look at, see who's going to get kicked out, who's in trouble. Man, motherfuckers is just... I'm getting, I'm getting over the shit because I don't need real-life drama in my game. Feel that dog. I'm supposed to escape from life in this shit. What your in your opinion, your ponytail? Fuck, I gotta watch that shit. I'll watch it so we can 
Look at all this loose hair, bro. Get to it uh, You gotta get it read to us. Oh, yeah, bro. I look like I got a ball spot, and I don't. <laughs> That's just funny. Well, it's another fucking episode of the Always Talking Shit show. PG crowd, right? You see that kid right there? No, I'm just lying. <laughs> Our <laughs> name ain't PG, sleep. boy. What, ATS show? Well, yeah, if we say that. Yeah, we was clean cut with it. We were smart yeah. for that. Yeah, but I always say the whole shit. I'm your boy, Keem Sincere. I'm your boy, Doc On. And this is the other episode brought to you by the team that brought to you. No, I'm playing. This nigga can't play no piano or nothing I'll be killing like these that. keys, man. Don't, they don't even see my shit. And that shit quiet. They still don't see it. New Always Talking Shit Show. We out, man.